Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. Sitting here with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, uh, and our guest Justin Smith. What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome What's back. Up? Yeah, welcome back. I love it. People uh, know him. They get, he gets, took a ton of pictures. <laughs> I know it's great. It's unless people are confusing me with Aaron, which I, yeah. I love so much. <laughs> still fair amount. There's a few. There's still, still several. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do not let me start this. Do not hibernate this winter. The open roads are calling, and a little chilly weather is not going to stop serious cyclists. The thing about dream bikes is that they are not one size fits all. When you want the ultimate. Totally personalized bike shop experience. Talk to the experts at competitivecyclist.com. Go to competitivecyclist.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate to get 15% off your first full priced purchase plus free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Some exclusions apply. Also, you cannot beat a solo stove with any fire pit sold anywhere. We love it. Shop solo stoves, best deals of the year during their Black Friday sale now through November 28th and get $10 off for the promo code Nate plus a free lifetime warranty and free 30-day returns. This is, there's, that is an extra $10 off Black Friday deals at solostove.com, promo code Nate. This week, we are thankful for DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code NATELAND. Bet just $1 on any Thanksgiving NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. And finally, thank you to our friends at Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. We will talk about more on that later. Welcome everybody. It's been a, a a crazy, it's been a great, crazy, busy, busy time. Uh, out you know on the road, people come to shows. Yep. Yeah. It's been great. They're yelling yeah. out. This is my Saginaw spirits. We just did uh, the place in the the in the building that they play in, not at the is hockey rink. Right. But they had a game going on during our show. Oh yeah. Really. Yeah. The whole place was packed. It was, they had, uh, we had two places like that. Saginaw. And then uh, uh, Peoria. Peoria. So it was like that too. Yeah, where the, that that place, they would have like, a, they have a theater, like a smaller room, and then they have an, a, a hockey rink. And every, both of them had, I mean, full. Everything rolling. was going. Everything was going. Parking wow. lot was full. Parking lot was wow. full. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, I mean, it was super cool. The crowds have been awesome. Uh, I got this in Saginaw uh, from a sheriff. He gave me, huh? From Peoria. Oh my what? God. Yeah. <laughs> Are you supposed to have that? I think <laughs> I get. I'm a sheriff now. I, I get to fill in for the days that he's he's gone. He calls you, out. you were deputized. Is that, was, is that how they word it? Yeah. I mean, it was very brief. Deputized. It wasn't a ton, <laughs> but it was uh, Brian there. Uh, He's gonna get fired for this now. <laughs> like he gets, this is a big story about yeah, it. He You're gave like, me a gun too. Wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a gun. I got his cop car outside. Uh, I think he does that for everybody. But yeah, I'm a sheriff, sheriff's police, Peoria County, Illinois. So yeah, I mean, if I ever want to pull somebody over with the bus, I can do it. And they go, come <laughs> up. I go, um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> I could show that name and registration. Yeah, and he goes, can I look at? If he asked me one question. What's your county? I go, it's all... Oh, Peoria County. <laughs> I know there that. You, you can't that, even ask me that. That's hard to forget. That's hard. Yeah. Peoria County. I've been a sheriff there for a long time. <laughs> I'm old enough to be a sheriff. You know? Yeah. Pretty excited about that. Uh, carry with me at all times, just in case. I would. I get in a gunfight. Be the only person to ever pull somebody over with a hockey jersey on. Yeah. I go, great. hey, done. <laughs> I'm undercover right now. Uh, so, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, let's restart with some of you guys' comments, uh, though. Uh, as always, thank you for uh, sending them in. We love reading them. I love, you know, I'm getting to meet people, too, that uh, have uh, the comments that you get to meet. We met someone this weekend uh, at it. Do we have the... Oh, uh, uh, oh, the video? Yeah. Text Travis to get that video. Yeah. That was that was maybe the, the coolest best. thing that yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. Text Travis to get that video and the word do it. And we'll okay. have it up at the end of this. 
Christy Crawford, as if this podcast could not get more wholesome. Having breakfast, sharing that baby brunch is on the way. I like that. Yeah, baby brunch. And the immediate support from the guys is what the world needs more of. Congrats, Brian and Ruth. Keep up the good work, everyone. Yeah. Got a Thank lot you. of tell people to tell breakfast congrats. Uh-huh. Had yeah. a lot of that. Everyone's been so nice. Yeah. yeah. Very, very smart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big moment. Yeah. I think it's the moment we jumped the shark of this. Uh <laughs> 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 Ryan's gonna end up. He has seven kids. Like it's just a giant family. <laughs> just try to bring us back. Can you imagine you having seven kids? Oh, well, seeing I couldn't imagine having one. No, yeah, no. But I know, just it would be like if you just have a bus. Yeah, of, I would the love breakfast to, bunch. Dude. The breakfast bunch. <laughs> just seeing you kind of you having to rile them all. Like, Ruth. What, isn't there a show bringing up Bates? That's just that. Like, yeah, a ton of kids. I just, but it's you specifically having to just get all your kids and it just would be, Yeah, it'd be, I mean, everybody would watch that show. (laughs) Just the overwhelming, I would want the camera on you the second your eyes open and you just know (laughs) the overwhelming you're going to have to deal with, (laughs) with seven kids just running in and you having to, you know, you got to get them to school, Ruth's working, (laughs) you got to. You got to get them to school and just, oh, it'd, it'd be, be great. It'd Even be just great. waking them up, you get a broom handle banging on the roof. <laughs> you look like you Forrest just... Gump waving at his kid <laughs> as he drives, flies away. Haley Joe Osmond? Yeah. You just got your hand on your back. <laughs> is he like me? Yeah. Is he, is he, like... <laughs> is he worried? Yeah. Is he worried like me? <laughs> or is he normal? <laughs> you see, all your kids are like, I got everything today, like right before they leave. <laughs> Everybody, Pat, make sure you got everything. <laughs> No, oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, it would. R.Y. Givens. Yeah. The way that Aaron and Nate both made the same movement at the same time in sheer glee and happiness for Brian was one of the most heartwarming and beautiful moments on this podcast. Congrats, Bengal Bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a great dad. Bengal Bracelet. Do you know it's a real thing? I looked it up. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called a Bengal Bracelet. Oh, wow. I don't know what it. what's special about it. I don't know what makes it a bangle. It's a bangle. <laughs> it's just what's special. It's about just it. circular. Yeah. Um, the different movement you guys made though is Aaron punched me so hard that I couldn't feel my arm for yeah. a while. But yeah, dude, he, I mean, he's, we thought he was having a stroke. <laughs> we trying to jump start it, like starting a lawnmower. <laughs> I think I forgot Shock about that. Either. In that moment, I forgot that you had a serious stroke scare earlier that day. Yeah. Are you a You're, puncher? Uh, no, he's, he's young. Like, I'm a 42-year-old man that you shake a hand, you buy him a gum cigar, and you go about your day. And this is a young child that doesn't know his own human strength yet. It's like a dog that doesn't, that's too strong. <laughs> and you're like, you got to, you're playing with a cat, man. Yeah, yeah. You got to go easy with, with the old dog. Lick him. He's like Clifford. Lick him. Lick him. He's like Clifford the yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sweet. Uh, but it, also, a bruise. it also hurts. He's got a bruise. <laughs> Uh, it's very sweet. <laughs> Derek Visor or Visor. My best friend's dad was 50 when he was born. Sounds like he is like his dad was when he was born. He was like, You're already 50. He's like, Golly, I missed the whole thing. <laughs> Am I reading it like this? Does it not sound like my best friend's dad it, was it 50? It could be when construed that way. Yeah. yeah. yeah like he was true. just when he, he was came born. out 50. Like. He came out yeah. just <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. He gives it a baby. He goes, What's that? Who's, sir, where are you going? You're like, I was just born. That's a movie right there. <laughs> Come out, you're 50, you miss all the beginnings. <laughs> he was a great and loving father, and on the plus side, his lack of control of his gas and other such old people <laughs> shenanigans made for comedy gold, and he wasn't even a comedian. Biff is going to be a great dad and makes a lot of his daughter's friends laugh. Congrats. I may have teared up a little when you gave the news. My best friend's dad was 50. <laughs> When he was born. I'm like having trouble with that sentence. <laughs> yeah, because you can't tell if he's talking about his dad or him, but he's talking about his, his friend's dad. Oh, my best friend's dad was 50. When my best friend was born. Oh, when my best friend was yeah. born. That's, that's how they oh. meant to word it, but it could oh, be construed that my best friend's dad way. was 50 when he was, okay. <laughs> Man, that's like, I love a guy coming out at 50. <laughs> I've never seen Benjamin Button, but isn't that yeah. what that is? Yeah, that's but, the idea of it. But he gets younger. <laughs> You're saying he comes out old and just keeps getting old. He just keeps getting fit. He doesn't get a full run at life, you know. Just starts at 50. Just starts at 50. Like, dude, you're almost done. Yeah. I just started, dude. First thing, he comes out, and he's like, God, my back is tight. And you're like, yeah, well, you're 50, man. That's what happens. He just didn't get a chance. Born first, uh, they, they take a picture of his first stroke. 
He has it immediately. <laughs> like I was, all this is a heart attack. It's just all the pictures of him in the hospital. <laughs> he just in. All right. How do you how do you think you get dressed when your dad's fifty? Like you just you just start like is your first onesie a cardigan sweater? Like I just feel like oh, you're just, uh, yeah, you're just bow you're just, tie. He's wearing bow. Wait, if he's if you're yeah, I mean like if your dad is fifty. Ask him. then. I mean, well, he's I mean right there. Ask I mean, him. I feel like Brian's a little bit younger than like he's not at all. I mean, but exactly I mean, like, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm just gonna let him fish. Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's not, he's not like, oh, you know, Thank where you. there's originals 50. Thank you, I mean, Justin. Right. I mean, he can still take a punch apparently. So, I mean, he's he doing, has, but he he's not doing bad. That really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. We had to, we can't raise this arm. As high I as feel bad to, the last time I we was had on. to have a talking to with Aaron, <laughs> yeah. and we said. I pulled him aside and I, I bent down on my knee and I said, "Hey, buddy, you can't hit <laughs> Pop the older. Off. Yeah, you can't hit the older people like that. They're too, you know. Gotta be nice to grandpa. It's uh-huh. the same thing when you like Harper goes and hugs her grandmother and you're like, "Hey, let's be easy. You know, like, gentle. You gotta yeah, yeah, be yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, can I comment on the stroke? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, you can. Yeah." <laughs> A lot of, I mean, again, everyone's so nice telling me how much they're thinking about. I'm, I haven't figured it out yet. I don't think it's a struggle. This is a really, really drawn out one. Yeah. We're still figure, trying to figure it out. So everyone's been so nice and saying they're praying for me. Some are so nice. They're like, you know, the Bible says our body's only temporary and that we'll be reborn again <laughs> oh, in heaven. They're already just, I'm like, they're writing me off. Yeah, they're writing They're totally yeah. writing me off. I'm like, they're already, they just put, when they're watching this on YouTube, they just put a tape over your face. <laughs> Because they're like, I'm just trying to get used to. He's not going to be there much longer, so I just want to get used to not seeing him. You just start getting all what the funeral you, Bible yeah. verses. We're gonna have uh, <laughs> Justin just is in that seat, and I put you over there just so it's just so we can will that seat out. I'm like, I'm, I'm just trying to get everybody used to like seeing it. We don't even announce it, Bates. Oh yeah, he died a couple weeks ago. Anyway, uh, Brad McCur- Mc- McMurdy, McMurdy. That's a fun name. That's a fun name. Brag McMurdy. At the end of the episode, I watched... Mc, that sounds like a name that you're like, Brad Mick, and you're like kind of excited for it. And he goes, Murdy. And you go, that was as good That's as fun. I hoped it was going to mm-hmm. be. <laughs> At the end of the episode, I watched after the sign-off as, an, as Nate walked to breakfast, and I expected him to give him a hug or something after breakfast is big news. Instead, he reached over and grabbed some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> Typical Nate, keep up the good work. That's so funny. That was good. Yeah. Uh, we've hugged. I don't think we did. Did we hug? I think we. Not no, much. it's very funny. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull that up. I want you to watch. No, I think we. Oh yeah. I want you to watch. What, uh, it'll, I think we. It'll have take hugged. a second. We've but hugged. I'll... Occasionally, when you got married. Yep. When this baby's born. I mean, the fact that you guys are having to argue about it just proves it's not. I just enough. wish we hugged more. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's a point. I hug. There's yeah. There's uh, my buddy Dan Chackey. We never would shake hands when we would leave because it'd be like. We're about to see each you know, it's like sometimes it's like it can be you're like, what are we doing? Right. You know? But I like hugging. But when you're around someone all the time, I'm not hugging. Here we go. Here's the end. So you get up. Brian just made the good it looks like you're about to get up. Hey man. Oh, uh, here we go. Congratulations, dude. Oh. And <laughs> 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 Priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne Carr. I oh. love that no one caught Nate's Napoleon and the Napolitan Neapolitan Neapolitan mix up. Yeah, I guess you know we were talking about Napoleon. I didn't catch Napoleon, it. And, Neapolitan. And you were talking about the ice cream, right? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. You said something about uh you're trying to think of another country where someone's from, and yeah. you said Napoleon, and we said, Well, he is from France, and then you said something about there's three different ones. Oh uh, well, I think I meant Napoleon, and then then I made it Neapolitan. Like I made oh, okay. it as a joke of like that was a joke off uh, the Napoleon. I didn't name. catch it. I didn't people, catch it either. People thought, but that. I think I thought Napoleon was the ice cream. Okay. I don't think I would. I was thinking, oh Neapolitan, like those are close enough to me. Napoleon and Napoleon ice cream would have been <laughs> the same. The same thing. I got you. So she's right. Yeah. I did think I I and I don't like Napoleon ice cream. I don't like strawberry. Neapolitan. I mean, I love it. It was it was with my favorite. You thing. like Napoleon ice cream? Oh, I used to at the. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's what it's called. I mean, I love that everybody was crucifying you for it. Is like, man, I I just stopped doing that like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's got. Sh- I don't ever eat the strawberry in Napoleon. You eat all of it. <laughs> 
You eat every bit of it. I just get after it, man. You'd eat all three together. I don't, I don't even think about what color it is. Really? Though. You just get in <laughs> there. Now, do you, you guys don't do think the- you got to be told strawberry? I don't like strawberry. I don't mind it. Do you do the carton of it, or do you do like the ice cream sandwich? Oh, because ice cream sandwich was a big too. deal for me when I was growing up. Uh, I, I don't, I don't eat strawberry ice cream. So, and Napoleon's never been a big part of my life. <laughs> and if it was, I stayed on one side. <laughs> I never went all just like the real Napoleon. Full just strawberry. Like real Napoleon. <laughs> I never went full strawberry. Yeah. Brandon Conrad. Nate is a former restaurant general manager. I can say that the ketchup comment about putting it in the cooler overnight is false. I never failed a state inspection and never had the ketchup in the cooler. It came with dry stock on our truck and was never refrigerated. Laura is thankful for this comment. Laura is truly, I mean, Laura might have wrote that. She huh? did. Yeah. That's the first time I'm seeing that. Yeah, Laura was very happy. Laura brought that up to me at night. Like, you know, it was like 11 o'clock and she's like, you know, I don't, I, why, I was, why no one keeps the ketchup outside. You don't, you don't do that at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. You don't put it in the fridge you don't take it back. And so forth. Laura agrees with you. Laura agreed with me. Okay. That's why I got Laura on it. So good. Yeah. When we first talked about this 15 years ago, well, I laid like the law right. down Why when we got married 15 years ago. I go, you want to be a part of this? <laughs> ketchup stays out. Now, I just came from a refrigerator ketchup family. And our family going forward, we're ketchup out. Yeah. Someone sent us a photo of a ketchup bottle that says, keep refrigerated for freshness. What do they know? <laughs> and I'm talking about Heinz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's going pretty good so far. Yeah. Megan, you have discussed bread and ketchup, but have you discussed where you all stand on butter? I'm a fan. My husband comes from a family <laughs> of people who leave their butter on the counter, but I come from refrigerated butter people. He has somewhat converted me because room temperature butter is more spreadable, but I'm still a refrigerated butter person at heart. I would keep it out. Yeah. I like that she says that because uh, I, I, I might start doing that. I just, it's I, dairy. What, I thought it, yeah, it's dairy. So I thought that wouldn't be good. I actually thought it would melt if you kept it out. But I think mm-hmm. it depends on how much you're using butter. You can leave it out. I mean, you got to put it in something. You can't just drop it on the counter. Yeah. The stick of it, you know? I liked it smooth. Because then when you go, it is the worst when it's like hard and you're like, well, there's no point. But to Justin's point, it's dairy. So it seems like that just wouldn't work. That's dangerous. Well, her family's doing great with it. Yeah. That's yeah. why she didn't have a last name. I mean, there's no last name. So <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very skeptical of that. She's on her own. She lives alone. <laughs> I think it's like safe a, to leave out. I think it's safe. Yeah. Y'all can come to me, Megan, and Aaron's house if you want. <laughs> Left out butter. I trust Justin. I mean, I'm tell- I mean, I'm, he's got a I'm background and stuff that I feel like he knows. And when he says stuff, he means food. Yeah. <laughs> Breakfast being a little throwing darts kind of early. <laughs> I'm telling you, when we when that butter topic came he up, he gave this you a nice a- compliment. He's trying to say you're a young man. Yeah, that's true. I try. And you come back with Justin knows about butter. Justin, go ahead. <laughs> what about jelly and jam? I like jelly. I won't. I don't like jam. What's the difference? There's a difference. And what is, I don't what, think there's a difference. There's a difference. What's Why it? would they call them two different things? And what is preserves? That's different. It's, it's why the, soda and pop aren't two different things. That's not, but they, they don't sell soda and pop, and in, in like that's just what someone calls it. They sell jelly and jam will be next to each other. Right. In glass, so you can buy one or the other. So they have to be different. Otherwise, it's chaos. It's What does it matter? Why are we even doing this? Jelly is great. I'm not a big, yeah, jam is thicker. I don't like jam. Mm. I like whatever they do to it to make it distant from the actual thing it is. You know? It's like smoother, no seeds. Whatever, yeah. No no jam pulp. Yeah, processed. Pulp. I like, uh, I want you to go, mm-hmm. I, I want mine to be processed. <laughs> I want it to go through a few things. <laughs> <laughs> this is about the Seinfeld episode. Caitlin Blanchard. The Blanchard the family. The Blanchard yeah, family's back. back. Without question, this was the liveliest and most engaged Nate has been on an episode. He's clearly <laughs> passionate about Seinfeld. I could never really get into the show, but this episode has convinced me to give it another try. Hey. That's good to hear. Convert to I thought she meant the podcast the first time I read that comment. <laughs> yeah. I could never get into this show, but this episode convinced me. That, yeah. you know, we didn't have Aaron be- bringing it down. <laughs> Maybe that's what. You didn't have any dead yeah. weight on the show that yeah. week. Kyle Gordon. Mark gets more and more red and sweaty as the ep goes on from holding in all his no-no words. <laughs> Seriously, though, what an excellent episode. I love Mark, and it's awesome to see him talk about something so personal to him with Nate. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mark loves Seinfeld, obviously. 
Joe List loves Seinfeld. Sal Vicano loves Seinfeld. There's a bunch of us that can talk about it a lot. But it was, yeah. I'm glad that worked out. That was a uh, kind of a very, very last minute that we did not think we were going to get to do. And then we were able to kind of all get together. And so that's why I put it together. So that was, uh, yeah. It was one of those that we were going to leave as a special episode. And then uh, it was like, this is a pretty good episode. Someone did say, I wish Aaron was on because it would have been the one episode where Nate knows more than Aaron about yeah. the topic. <laughs> But I well, him. I knew more so much that we didn't invite him. <laughs> yeah. uh, Aaron found out about that episode the day it aired with y'all. <laughs> What's so, this? He goes, so y'all recorded? <laughs> I was outside of my van and we we're like, oh, were you? Michael Rumsey. I'm 35 years old and I've known that Seinfeld existed for basically my whole life. Yet I have most certainly watched less than one hour of the whole show ever. For some reason, listening to you guys talk about it made me want to watch so I started this afternoon and was hooked after the first scene in the diner. There you go. Converting people. You got Converting. Some new fans. Yeah. Car- Carly. 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 C A R A L E E. Carly. Carly Crow. Carly Crow. That's a good name. That's, That's a, a great name. name. Carly Crow. Sounds like a name you'd write in a script. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of season seven, just getting past the point where George proposes to Susan. I was at the gym listening to the pod last week, and y'all talked about Susan's character being killed off without even kind of a spoiler alert. (laughs) (laughs) When I heard this, I immediately stopped what I was doing, left the gym, drove home and watched Seinfeld until I got to the episode where she died. Disappointed, but not surprised. Gotta love Nate and Brett for spoiling a major plot point. That is true. I guess I did not think about people going back and watching it now. It's like your Sixth Sense joke. It's been yeah. 30 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a comedy. Yeah. It's, uh, uh-huh. so, but yeah, it's very funny. Isaac the Salsa Shark. While I get, uh, while I get why some people, man, while I get why. It's you can't throw one. double Yh's like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that why close. you got to go with though. Instead of while, while I get like, though no 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 instead of part. while though I get why oh see that's what I would have done to prevent what while just happened. I get though some people prefer season three <laughs> though I get why while I get why I think I helped him write this <laughs> yeah while I get why some people prefer season three and beyond season one and season two are the best seasons of the show ooh. Season three starts to go over the top and loses the realistic underpinning that made season one and two much more genuine. Three and four are surprisingly steady, and five or six are still quite enjoyable, but the show becomes a parody of itself and can't sustain the simple and clever joy of the first two seasons. I just disagree. Yeah. I mean, look, I like I, said, I like Jelly, so <laughs> I think I'm fine with it becoming uh-huh. a parody of itself. Like, that's just the guy I am. I could see someone that does like the beginning of it, and you know, uh, it's like the people that, like like Metallica. Then they not like them once they became super famous. I've never heard that. The, I thought I heard like those yeah. people thought they they sold out. Oh yeah, because they right. Probably, I feel yeah. like everybody all these oh they're going mainstream. They're not. Yeah, you like music. like like the Nirvana fans. You like some music and food. Go yeah, ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think I think bands. I think it's a common thing with like grungy bands like yeah. that, where and even like hip hop is the same way, where it's like you like an artist when they start, and then all of a sudden when they start getting successful, you start seeing other types of people get yeah. into them, and then you're like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, but they can make money. I mean, it's good for them, but good you're, for them. you're just like, ah. Oh. Who's, like, stuck true the whole time? Jay-Z? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a few dudes that are. 21 yeah, Pilots. Yeah. 21 Pilots. Yeah. I, I think there's, a, I think there's a lot of them that are like that. I just, I think it's just kind of like you, you have to make a decision. Do you want to be commercial or do you want to, like. Be that life, you know. If you yeah. do, you, do you want to play DMX? Do you want to play venues? I mean, DMX is a great example. Yeah. Um, but do you want to play venues where there's bars in the middle of yeah. them? Or, yeah. Or, or but, not so, so yeah, much. DMX would be like one that he stayed true to. Oh, who for sure. He was Tupac? Well, Tupac was never, never what like he. I mean, I get into arguments with people about this. Biggie was. Yeah. Biggie was for sure. Yeah. Um, Biggie was that dude his whole life. Um, but Tupac was, I mean, Tupac went to like an art school and was like studied dancing and 
that's how he met Jada Pinkett Smith early on yeah. in their career. Mm. So like uh, he so was never like he's he not. was never that dude. He what happened was he hung around like real gangsters. Like Suge Knight was a real gangster. Yeah. So he was just trying to keep up. It's kind of like a thing where it's like when you're around a bunch of real like pit yeah. bulls, you gotta you gotta act like a pit wow. bull. I never knew that. This is this is the most hip hop this show has ever yeah, gotten. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, say, me and you, I I stuck to my roots, and you yeah. went more commercial. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I do more underground. The underground king over yeah. here, dude. I do the East Garth room. Brooks over here. <laughs> that's <laughs> Lebanon for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's crazy, but Tupac. That I bet we get. We're gonna get some comments on that. Oh, I'm sure we could do it. Yeah. And then Justin will be gone, and we'll have to field your mess. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for that one. I can't yeah, wait. I can't wait for this group. To- <laughs> Message Justin if you have any big problems with that. Uh, Stephen Kelly. I once had a conversation with Jerry Seinfeld. He was at a Porsche show in Hershey, Pennsylvania, around 1999. I was 11 years old, a big fan of Seinfeld, and his show had just ended. Jerry had entered the event as my father and I were leaving. I was just young enough to have the confidence or lack of self-awareness to yell out, Hey, Jerry. He turned and looked at me, not knowing what to say next. I just said, You're pretty funny. His response delivered in the classic Jerry tone and cadence was to shrug and say, Me? No. And he kept walking. To this day, the best conversation of my life. That's great. Yeah. I found out, uh, I also got a message from, uh, uh, it was pretty exciting, Spike uh, Ferenstein. Is that how you say his name right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, Spike messaged me. He wrote Andrea Doria, <laughs> uh, uh, which is very, very cool. I remember he, I always liked Spike because uh, he, he had a uh, talk show too. Like he was, like he, he got his own stuff. Uh, and he said he showed the the clip that we posted. He said he showed it to Jerry. He was with Jerry, wow. and Jerry loved it. So we're close. Really? We're close. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So that was pretty fun. Uh, <clears throat> the one episode I'm not on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a podcast with you, Brian, and uh, Norman, because that's a great podcast. I would never change it. <laughs> And if Jerry tells us that, Aaron, you're out. Hey, I get I, it. We got to do it. it. You know? I, I would resign if he said yeah. that. You and Justin can do Aaron land. It'd be, it'd be a lot a lot skinnier on this side of the table. I'll we can get on other sides of the table, for yeah. sure. <laughs> no, you have to do Aaron land like this. We same side yeah, it, though. Same side. Uh, you ever sit same side with your wife at a restaurant? No. I don't think I'll ever do that. Yeah. But you see couples that I would. would yeah, my daughter, I, I have. Daughter's different. Yeah. But uh, no, I would just talking. You wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, a lot of people don't talk. If you go yeah. to a restaurant, you look around. Couples I need to get in on that. More. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's your secret? Yeah, I just noticed y'all over here. Not <laughs> you haven't said a word, and I love that. That's a George uh, Costanza moment. Yeah, just walk exactly. over, shake their hands. Yeah. Well, I like to thank you, sir. I like what you <laughs> Thank you. I'm going back in. <laughs> Ever wish your local bike shop had a near in infinite inventory of all the components and accessories you will ever need? Lucky for you, CompetitiveCyclist.com is just a click away. Competitive Cyclist is the online specialty retailer of road and mountain bikes, components, apparel, and accessories. Featuring cycling standout brands like POC, Castelli, oh, how do you say it? Castel, Castelli. Ooh, I got mm. PLC Castelli, Pearl Izumi, and 510, and an unrivaled in-house bike assembly operation. They bring the personal attention of the best local bike shops along with the selection and convenience only possible with shopping online. But the real difference at Competitive Cyclists are the gearheads, equal parts customer service and cycling fanatics. Gearheads are former pro athletes, Olympians, and seasoned cyclists with years of experience, all available by phone, email, or chat for product recommendations and hard-won advice. Competitive Cyclist has 100% guaranteed returns. This is a great thing. If you want to get into bike riding, this is where you should go and should go do it. I always think I want to get into bike riding. I think I always see it, and you're always like, man, I I do like riding a bike, Uh, and I just don't do it. Now I need to go do it because I can do this. And, you, you know, when I go, when you go, you're like, I don't know what I'm getting. Right. And so this makes it not be as overwhelming. Go go to competitivecyclist.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate to get 15% off your first full priced purchase plus free shippings on orders of $50 or more. 
Some exclusions apply. Go right now and get 15% off plus free shipping at competitivecyclist.com uh, slash Nate and enter promo code Nate, competitivecyclist.com slash Nate, promo code Nate. Some exclusions apply. You cannot beat Solo Stove as well. Uh, as I said, we are excited. Fall has started. Uh, this is the time for a Solo Stove. Solo Stove has been so much better than any fire pit. Uh, like I've always said, you don't smell like the campfire. You don't have to go shower. You don't got to go wash your clothes right after. That's a big deal to me. That is the, I mean, that is the main deal for me with starting a fire. I don't do it because of that reason. I love a fire. I think everybody loves a fire, but you don't want to smell like smoke. Solo Stove does it where you don't have to. There's no setup. Just unbox and enjoy a little fire starter wood, and you can have a nice fire quickly. We have the bonfire version with stand. It is small enough to take to the front or back, or if we go to the lake, we can easily take it there. It burns down to a white ash. So cleanup is super easy. Solo Stove, I mean, gets great times, like I said, without the fire set fumes, which is the main thing for me. I mean, so little smoke, you wonder how there is so much fire. The fire looks great. It's easy to keep lit and even easier to clean. Solo stove fire pits are portable and built to last. It looks great, too. They're so confident you will love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Shop Solo, Solo Stove's best deals of the year during their Black Friday sale now through November 28th and get $10 off the promo code NATE. Plus a lifetime warranty and a free thirty day free th- and a free thirty day returns, get an extra ten dollars off Black Friday deals at solostove.com. Promo code Nate. This Thanksgiving, be thankful that you're with your family, you have food, uh, and you also have free bets. That is right, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL has a turkey day no-brainer you cannot miss. The Titans, are uh, they play the Patriots game coming up on Sunday, so I'm going to get on DraftKings for that one. New customers can bet just $1 on any Thanksgiving NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. That is uh, tomorrow, so get your bet in now. If Sportsbook is not available in your state yet, you can still get in on the Thanksgiving NFL action. Make your... First deposit, you can play free for millions with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contest. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code NATELAND. Bet just $1 on any Thanksgiving NFL game and win $100 in free bets if if either team scores a point. That is promo code NATELAND. This Thanksgiving at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, must be 21 or older, New Jersey, in, uh, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you got a gambling problem, if it's getting too crazy, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Finally, Viore. As I always said, we're a big fan of Viore. I've been wearing it on the bus. You can sleep in the – I got the Sunday performance joggers. I mean, you can sleep in them. You got stuff. You got a shirt. Yeah, the shirt right now. underneath there and the pants I'm wearing. Yeah. I mean, just it, it, they're, it's very, very comfortable. You noticed it on the bus. You yeah. said, what is that? Because it looked cooler yeah. than what I usually wear. Yeah. It's Viore. Yeah. It's Viore. It makes you feel, you know, Laura's got it. She's been wearing it. It's just like, it does. It looks nice. It's like that athletic gear. Yeah. I don't know. What do you call that material? It's so comfortable. I've never worn anything quite like it, but call I got it, those joggers too. Call it kind shirt. Well, people notice it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, it looks, that's what's great. I mean, that's what everybody's wearing athletic gear. And so you want to do it in a nice way. Viore is that. It's a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of old, traditional old workout gear. Everything is designed to work out in, but like we said, it looks good. I mean, I'll be honest with you, none of us are working out in it. We're wearing it just out and about. I have worked out in the core shorts, which are great. Uh, Laura says she has the the women's performance jogger. Uh, she got it in a really nice green color, and it looks great. Uh, Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash Nate. That is Viore, V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, 
but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to vioriclothing.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Uh, so we've had, we were just got back, uh, if you're watching this, uh, I did Saginaw Spirits. Uh, I have that. We were just in Saginaw. Yeah. And then uh, we were on the road. Yeah. Living it up. Uh, it was great. This weekend was awesome. You were in Peoria, I think? In, yeah. We were in, uh, yeah, I mean, this last Champaign, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Rochester, Royal Oak, Saginaw, Peoria. Another show at uh, the Opry. Uh, shows coming up. L.A., Los Angeles. December 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I'm in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Uh, and then that might be it till January. And Jan- I mean, it's a big, a lot of dates announced. Mm-hmm. If you go to my website, if you want to buy stuff, and we're adding shows, and these shows have been, I mean, it's it's unreal how many people are coming out to these shows. I yeah. mean, it truly, uh, like and- I always say, none of this is lost. I, these shows are for you guys, uh, and I wouldn't get to be where I'm at if it wasn't for you. And I never... You know, as I'd never try to take that for granted, and uh, I know I'm the reason I get to be there is because y'all are, are listening to this and y'all come to these shows, and uh, y'all decide if I get to do those shows. So thank you for coming out. And they're traveling. They're traveling. And they're great traveling. distances. Yeah, no, I always feel bad. People are like, we drove from Chicago, and I'm like, yeah, just got announced. <laughs> Chicago got announced. <laughs> I mean, that happens. Uh, it happens a lot. Uh-huh. But people, we had someone from uh, Nashville, Sugar Tree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tennessee. You ever heard of Sugar Tree? I have not. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like, she said, Sugar Tree, Dixon, Nashville. Yeah. And they- uh, Very nice people. Cheetah County? Nice. Uh, or Dixon County? Decatur County. Decatur County. Mm-hmm. Oh, disappointed in you. Ooh, you no, that, I mean, man. that's not Dixon and- I'm just going off what he told me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, uh, yeah, they were cool. But yeah, people been trying to- me and Justin went through uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. Uh, what an adventure. Yeah. All of the, them. All of them, the Jason ones. You know, as look, if you're if you're a little listening to this and you're like, well, my parents don't let me watch Friday the 13th, guess what? Mine did not either. <laughs> and so you have to wait and watch them when you're 42 years old like I do. I mean, I've just realized, like, when your parents don't let you watch movies, it's not a bad thing. Because then you get to watch these movies later. Like, I'm going through, uh, like, Die Hard. I'm going through all these movies that I never would have been allowed to watch. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to enjoy them now where I understand them more. I can't wait till I get to, to you watch Executive Decision. He wants me to watch Executive Decision. Oh, my gosh. So good. Kurt Russell at his most Kurt Russell. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so good. And Steve Spurs in it. Oh, we my had goodness. Jason, what's so funny about the Jason movies is like. Should we say spoiler alert in case anybody's <laughs> jogging on a yeah. treadmill right now? <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. I don't. You know, the first <laughs> ones, it just starts out. And then you get to. We, we, we got really hung up on. He goes to Manhattan, and we're like, well, how does he get to Manhattan? <laughs> so we had to watch a bunch to go, like, how does he go to Manhattan? You That's know? so funny. And he gets to Manhattan. Uh, it's on a boat. I don't – look, I'll I save you. You can watch them. It's, it's, they're, it's, it, they're rough. Well the, well, the series is bananas because we started because he'd never seen any of them. And, spo- I mean, again, spoiler alert, the, the first – like, the first Friday the 13th, it's not even Jason – it's his mom. Well, I just watched Scream with him, yeah. and, and so you know, so that's that, a plot point they reveal. I would have missed that question, yeah. right? And so, and then the second movie. I mean, like, if you ask anybody, what's the most important part of Friday the Thirteenth? Like, what's the most iconic thing? They're going to say Jason and his hockey mask. Yeah. In the second movie, he doesn't even wear a hockey mask. He wears a pillowcase with one hole in it, like oh, to look through, to see one eye. And then, and then the third movie, he doesn't wear a mask through three fourths of it. That's the whole part of the theme of Jason is like whatever the title is, they wait a good amount of time before they yeah. get into it. And so like every – and then he always just comes back alive like he's undead. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. like they always show how he comes back alive. And then they uh, they do – and look, Jason's – if you watch these horror movies, I'm not, nothing gets – I like Friday the 13th. I think the beginning ones are better and then it, I mean, it gets kind of wild. When we watch, like, the Manhattan one is just, you're like, how does he, he's always in this Crystal Lake. A, we always, the Crystal Lake, how is this even open? I mean, how is not this major news that this guy keeps coming back to life and every year kills 30 to 40 people? Yeah. And how they just have not, 
blocked off this area to go, guys, you can't come. And he's doing it. And these kids come and they're like, oh, we're going to do it. And it's like, it's it was a year ago this just <laughs> yeah. happened. It's not like they're like, oh, it's 50 years. A year ago. I'm, I mean, so many people There's died. There was a massacre. Wow. A real bad. Not good. And they're all convinced it's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah it's, nah, it's, a, it's an old wives' tale. We're going to have fun. Was okay. it one of your first jokes about? My first series? joke about Jason. Yeah, I posted it, I think, recently. Uh, but then it was like, it's just very funny that A, that is happening. And then, so then, but when you're like, he goes to Manhattan, you're like, well, how does he get there? And so that makes you go just to go, I don't, I want to see. He's in Crystal Lake, upstate New York, and gets to man. Like, Jason, by the way, is. His brain is tiny. He's yeah. he's like an animal. It's like a, he's like real dumb. Well, he's a child. He's a child, he's a child. when he when he yeah. passes away. So he's kind of got and a brain so, of a child. Yeah, but he knows uh, a lot about electrical work. <laughs> he can take the lights off of anything, boat, house. He just knows where phone cords are. Like he, I don't think he could use a phone, but he knows how to make you not use a phone. It's like he went to a trade school. And yeah, yes, yes. It's like he went to a trade school. Uh, weapon weaponry. I mean, any weapon he knows. I mean, crossbow, whatever. He he can get anything and use it unbelievably. And precise. And precise with it. But just not good, uh, but can be tricked in other ways. If you just say you're his mom in a voice, he doesn't, that. he's like, ah, what? What's happening? You know. Even an impromptu haircut. Impromptu haircut. He's while, while, while he's chasing somebody else yeah. around, you just go up there, give yourself Shake a your haircut. Head, oh, my God. Use a couple strains. Buy mm-hmm. you 30 seconds. He doesn't know what's happening. Uh, and then, so we're at seeing how does he go to Manhattan? And he goes to Manhattan. He gets on a boat, takes the boat. Crystal Lake, apparently, can you can get from Crystal Lake to New York City in a boat. <laughs> on a boat. On a boat. <laughs> it's not just a boat, a luxury a boat. cruise. A luxury cruise. He goes somewhere and then jumps off his boat. He just, his boat sails into the, just to a the, dock. A dock. Yeah. And no one, no one even talks about that. It's his, so, just the fact that his boat, he just dives off in the water, and that boat sails into a dock, and then he climbs on the boat next to it, which is a cruise. No one even stops this cruise from going out, being like, "Hey, we've had a pretty bad accident with this other boat that we that uh, uh, no driver. <laughs> How where did this boat come from? They it's kids, and they go doesn't matter, doesn't get talked about. They get on the boat." He then, you know, kind of gets everybody on the boat. No one, no one <laughs> knows it. And then he gets to Manhattan, and he's uh, just walking. I mean, he's at Times Square at one point. And I, you actually <laughs> believe he's on a subway, and no one's stopping it. And I actually believe that. Yeah, that's the most believable thing. Yeah, because Manhattan's so crazy that you're like, I think any like New York, they don't just they don't stop stuff. Yeah. Well, also, the, you, there's that moment where like the crazy guy. Is going through and you get real small and you're like, if he just does, if I, you treat crazy people like, like a T-Rex, like if I just don't move, <laughs> and don't breathe, yeah. he'll just go like right past. Yeah. And man, and if, and he, when he goes to Manhattan, that's the very end of the movie. So if you want to see it, mm. it's it, mm. honestly just kind of fat. You could just kind of skim through these. Which one is that? What's it called? Jason takes, goes to Manhattan. Goes to Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> but he takes an hour and 15 yeah. minutes to get there. The Muppets take Manhattan. And, Jason and then Manhattan. the other one was uh, Jason goes to space. And <laughs> so that was the one that really got us. We go, well, how does he get to space? <laughs> new York and, has a new problem. <laughs> yeah. Jason takes Manhattan. Uh, barely in Manhattan, to be honest, and really only going after a couple people. Right. Uh, everybody handles their close ones being killed very well as well <laughs> in all these movies. Like it's people they're getting, you know, that's um, part of their families. They get killed and they just kind of move on. And uh, but then he goes to space, and you're like, so we're like, how does he get to space? That's a real one. That's a real one. After this is, is Jason X. Jason goes to space. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, the most plausible one <laughs> I've seen. I actually make sense of him getting to space. It's the only one that you're like, I can see it. And they make it the year 2455, which we were saying. <laughs> I would think when they wrote it, they go, hey, man, don't go that far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's too far. Yeah. And he goes, no, no, we got to go to 24. They go, that's 2040. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Like, just, you know, this was written, this was made in 1990. When was it made? They said 2001. 2001. Oh, 2001. So you like go to 2050 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, 
And it's like just or something yeah. like that. Twenty twenty one hundred. Yeah. You go and he goes, no, 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 24, 55. You're like, I just, that's so far <laughs> yeah. away. We don't even, ha- we can't even make it look like it's 24, right. 55. But him getting the space completely made sense to me. Because he they go back and like they bring him. And I mean, it's just, I would say, this is all fictional, obviously. <laughs> but <laughs> I, we don't know how generation after generation, this is not passed along to go, if Jason is not on your planet, do not bring him mm-hmm. on the planet. Yeah. It does not, it's never gone good for every every year. This guy gets brought back Did to life. Did they ever talk about why he kills people? Does he just enjoy it? He's uh, it's because of his mom. It's yeah. like a whole thing. Yeah, it's like his mom. he the whole plot is, is that he drowns because people at the camp were negligent. They should have been watching him and they weren't. So the whole thing is that he comes back and punishes people at the camp. Because it's like they, it's like a tradition kind of thing. So but then, then, he then, goes, he, like, then he's in space killing people from 500 yeah. years later. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They brought okay. back. <laughs> so they re- bring back two people from that uh, Jason person. So, I mean, Jason. It's it's it's. So the movie starts. It's supposed to be like 2008. It kind of gets wacky. The next one after this is Freddy versus Jason, and it actually goes back. <laughs> oh, we're we're but we're gonna so, go. We're gonna do the Friday the Thirteenth or no the. Uh, we gotta do Freddy first. Freddy and, and then, then we'll Nightmare uh, build up to it. Yeah, I think Freddy and Mike Myers are supposedly a lot better. Uh, but <laughs> Jason, it's just it is very funny to think with just any like I would like to, you're just a part of it. and You go like guys, we're not gonna. Like he's at one point he's in a he's chained up and they got him at the beginning of it and they're like you know they got him he can't get out and they're like we need to freeze him like they're gonna f- cryo whatever and they're gonna freeze him uh, and they because you can't kill him and so uh, this one actually does make they catch him with the FBI like it's like it's the only one that kind of makes <laughs> they they have a trap for him yeah they have a, they have a trap for him it's like. The FBI is involved. You're like, finally, after 40 years, the FBI is like, I guess we'll go investigate this <laughs> guy that keeps coming alive every other year and just wiping out 50 people. I mean, they just, they just leave sheriffs in charge. I'm like, literally, at the at the beginning of these movies, they show the end, and I promise you, it's literally like at the end, like all these people are dead, and ambulances just show up. They just put everybody in the wagons, and they just leave. There's no there's no yellow tape. There's no investigation. It's like, let's just get them all, and then we'll figure it out later. Ooh. And no one ever just goes, and every time, they're like, Jason's alive, and they go, that's a wise tale. You're like, I mean, it was, well, did we have newspapers in the, yeah. when the, this is not the 1800s. This is 1980 when this is happening. And they keep going to the lake. And they keep going just to go the Just go lake. to Myrtle Beach. You're on the East yeah, Coast. You're on the East Coast. Go to a different lake. Apparently, Crystal Lake's the only, that's the only place he's at. <laughs> Just don't go to that. Or Manhattan. You can, you can well, because they bring him to Manhattan. Don't give him a, don't dock a boat in a lake that I thought was closed. <laughs> I didn't know. That'd be like, if you go to Old Hickory Lake, can you get from Old Hickory Lake to- Well, that one little stream goes all the way to- To this Crystal Lake. Where does it go? I guess it does. It goes all the way to Manhattan. He took, and then where we does it go? zoom out. I mean, that's going to be, and then- <laughs> that's brutal. I, I don't know how he gets over there. <laughs> he takes a boat from Crystal Lake right here. Yeah. Does he see the Statue of Liberty? There's no way to get out of it. How do how do they get that boat out of there? Well, it goes down. Yeah. And then it goes through the then, trout pond. Yeah, trout pond. He's probably like, all right, we're in good waters now. <laughs> then you take and Beaver Brook. Gets, and he's on a pretty big boat. It's a. I guess he had to go up. How many Maybe people die on a regular there. cruise? Yeah. 30 40 i mean on his yeah if jason's on it and the one guy he goes J- i mean jason's on this boat which i do the main guys like doesn't believe it i understand that because you're like why would he be on a boat yeah how did he get on this boat and you're like you're right man i don't know how he got on this boat but he's on it he's on it and then you get to manhattan and yeah i don't know and, so, all, and everybody keeps disappearing and nobody's like hey there's no red flags just like ah oh, it's just yeah, it's, yeah, everybody, I mean, just... There's yeah, explosions the and nobody asks questions. No one ever knows where anything's at. And no one's ever surprised that lights go out <laughs> in any Jason movie. Electricity goes out, they go, golly, again? And like, they never, they never just question it. You know, and I get, look, that's the idea of horror. I'm not trying to take it seriously. It's just, if you do watch it, uh, Can I just have it? fun. When you watched it, because I think that's more than any horror movie, the one that people parody. Yeah. 
So were there really scenes? I saw it a long time ago where the car doesn't start. And for whatever reason, people are hiding ridiculous places. You know, there's commercials now, Geico commercials, where they make fun of it. Yeah. Is that really happening in those? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They every do. every yeah. every movie. It's like if you opened an O'Reilly's at Crystal Lake, you would be a millionaire. Like no car works. Yeah. No every there's or they'll like or they'll do dumb things. They're like, hey, what? we're gonna we're gonna sit out here for eight hours. What? What? I kind of like O'Reilly's. that. O'Re- O'Reilly's, O'Reilly's auto, auto parts. parts. Wait, why? Because every because, car is broken down. Oh, All these yes. cars need repairs. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, thanks, okay, that is funny. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Did you think I bombed a joke? And you were like, God, man. I don't just- think I got the joke, and I think I represent all the people listening. And so I think I was trying to make it where they- Well, I think this is the Votech part of the table. Yeah. So I think that's why, that's why Aaron I think got the high, it. Look at that hat. I think our highbrow <laughs> listeners got it, but I think us regular folk, uh, maybe it breezed past us. But if you open an O'Reilly, yeah, that's funny because all the nothing works. Yeah, or they they do they do dumb things. where like, hey, so we're gonna we're gonna have like a picnic, but we need some light. It's like I don't know. Why don't we leave my? We'll turn my headlights on for eight hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then they get there and like, oh gosh, somehow yeah. the battery's dead. Yeah, I forgot to charge it before I left. Mm-hmm. Like that's not how batteries work. Like, <laughs> which, and one person yeah. always knows about Jason there and talks about it. Yeah, and they just go, and that person still comes, <laughs> and then. Just and then it, it a lot of times, well. a lot of times that person that knows was in the last movie. Mm. Mm. They're like, ah, I was here last summer and woo, didn't learn crazy. Yeah. So let's have a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we did. Also, <laughs> uh, I was on CBS this morning, which yeah. is very cool. A lot of cool responses yeah. from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, very nice. Gail King seems to be a fan. Yeah, one step away from we got Gail, then Oprah. And yeah. The, uh yeah, it was very cool. That was it was a great very, story. Very nice. Yeah, it was very. It's cool. My dad got to yeah. uh, have him yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, you're 30 now. Yeah. So I texted Aaron, "Happy birthday." He gave me a thumbs up back. Ooh, <laughs> does that seem weird? <laughs> kind of busy, huh? I texted him happy birthday. About? He didn't even text me back. I think I'd rather not a text back. I said thanks, man. I thumbs no. it up and then I said thanks. I don't think I got a thing. I texted oh. everybody. He said new phone. Who dis? Yeah. <laughs> That's not, well, you know how it is. When your birthday, you get you're getting all these messages. It. It's a, it's I a big thing. I think that's what I'm. Uh, I'm fine. I think I'm more fine with no response because <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, I bet you got a ton. Then a thumbs up, like I'm your. Uncle, <laughs> I think if you, I think if you open it up, you would see that I said thanks, man. I don't think so. I think because I haven't looked again. Okay, I treated him to a round of golf for his birthday. What'd you write back to Brian? Big letter <laughs> when he said happy birthday. <laughs> My dearest Brian, I gave him a call. <laughs> yeah, I called him. I called him. <laughs> yeah. So nice to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I heard I heard from my true friends today. Yeah. Hey, yeah. dude. Well, it's good to have you here, man. <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday. Uh yeah, and then the, your baby and the and the stroke on the same episode. Uh, <laughs> yep, a lot of stuff happening over there. That's the yeah. most stuff happening to a man that could happen. Yeah, now you dropped a lot on us that episode. Man. Yeah, going to be a dad and having a heart heart attack as is a stroke a heart attack? No, it's, I think it's, it has to do with the blood flow from the heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's related. It's related. Yep. Yeah. All right. I uh, went to uh, Titans game yesterday. Oh yeah, met a awesome. lot of met a lot of folks. Yeah, at the game, at the game, which I loved, and um, and then somebody posted one of the photos, and then some other people replied, "Oh man, I would have loved to have met you there." And then I'm like, "Oh well, I'm in section three thirty, row B next week." And they're like, "Okay, well, you come down any like half time?" Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they want to meet me, but they don't want to go there that You high. come to yeah. my seat. What time? Just, you, what time do you come down? <laughs> yeah, just know if you want to meet Brian at the show, he will be the highest up of any of you that want to meet. He <laughs> can't go much higher. Go to the top of uh, uh, Nissan Stadium. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you're standing on the last row, you're closer to him than at any point of that stadium. <laughs> Your third row. I posted third... that flyover video, yeah. and, and I was above the flyover. Yeah, like yeah. I could look down on the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But section three thirty, row B, come by. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. Just You're there every game. I I'm in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> He'll let you know. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <you'll be> there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I did a show in Amish country this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Shipshawana, Indiana. Ship. Ship Shawana. It's a good name. Let me tell you, I've done a full 180 on 
uh, um, Amish. Mm. I used to not like them. And now you're way on board. Now I'm I'm kind of on board with what they're yeah. doing. Did you try the room temperature butter? Is that what would have happened? <laughs> That's where you tried it? That would have been where you tried it. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, it had nothing to do with butter. Yeah. But uh, I just like what they got going on. Yeah. I could, I could, if all, everybody I knew and loved was doing that, mm-hmm. I would have no problem. Yeah, doing that. No, so it's Being no electricity, world. right? Well, they can still go to a room. You know, they can enjoy it. They just can't do it. You know, in their house. Oh, so they can go to a movie? Sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they podcast? would. I don't think they would. I don't think we have any podcast fans. Yeah. I, I There were like no Amish people at the show. I was kind of disappointed. But I was telling these guys, you know, it was really interesting. You're in Amish country. There's Amish people everywhere. You go outside and you listen. And in the distance, you just hear. Yeah. You just hear everyone's taking buggies everywhere. Yeah. You never think of that. There's no cars in the yeah. distance. Like, this is how we're meant to live. Is there a bunch? They, of, do, they do scooters, too. That's They're big on scooter culture, too. They have these big wooden <laughs> scooters that they. I didn't see. Oh yeah. I when, you, see. when you when you like it's like when people when like young kids got to get somewhere they have these big they're like crazy looking scooters yeah uh, and they just well, they're not ready for a horse yet huh I guess not I guess when you're that young the buggies they, are weird too because like a lot of times they sit in the back so it literally looks like nobody's in the buggy the buggy's just kind of going down the road by itself mm-hmm. that's the moment you're like like I, I always have a, a thing in my life where I like. If I see something that's weird and I like, there's supposed to be somebody there. Like even like on the bus, there's that thing where like I see people and there's like nobody there, and I'm like, mm-hmm. did the rapture just happen? Like it's mm-hmm. like, I'm like that because I grew up with those movies and stuff like. I was like, oh, that that there it is. Yeah, that's a it moment. happened. Yeah, <laughs> I always think that's a funny. That's you should do that as a joke. <laughs> I mean, you think so? I think it's funny. Have you never had that? Like when you're little, the rapture. Like oh, you I just, just had it with my dog. My dog disappeared. I thought. Did they take my dog and not me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would have it like as a kid, you just always like, hello? Hello? Did the rapture, you just think the rapture happened and then uh, you're, and then your mom comes around and you're like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. I, went, here. To, I yeah. went down a grocery store aisle the other day and there's just a cart there full of stuff and I was like, wait a second, what's going on? Until you see somebody else, you think maybe that's what happened. Maybe it happened. Yeah. I, I think about that all, like, I mean. I think a lot of people thought about it. If you grew up in church, I think, than a lot of people, I think especially because like, I'm not in that I'm not in that life anymore. So, but even like that's like the one thing that still like sticks you to me. Sold out. Like, well, then, like, so then you sold out. Then you should be worried you're, about you're it. The, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're the you're the Tupac of uh, Christianity. That's right. Yeah, we're the biggies. We're the real deal, and you're Tupac. I did a show in uh, Indianapolis this weekend, and I was coming down the elevator uh, at my hotel. And the door opened. This young woman with her luggage was about to get on the elevator. And I stepped off, and then I realized I'm still on the second floor. So I immediately like, oh, and I got back on. And then she just stood there, and I'm like, are you coming on? And she's like, no, no, I'm not. And it was clear that she thought after I saw her <laughs> that I'm like, I'm going to get back on this elevator oh. and do something. So I, she wouldn't get on. So I just went on down the first floor. And then I thought, I'm going to wait for her and oh my God. show her I mean, what I'm doing. This is the point. <laughs> yeah, I know. This, she's nailing. She was right. You're right. I thought, well, she, that's, I'm kind of proving yeah. her point. If I follow her to her car, yeah. she's like, see, I told you I'm normal. Yeah. Did you wait for her? No. Oh. Because to your point, she'd be yeah. exactly right. I'd be yeah. proving her point. But it was kind of funny that. Did you see her come down? No, I went ahead and walked to my car. I didn't uh, want her to. to freak out those elevator Freaking doors open on the first floor brian's just standing right there <laughs> waiting yeah. for. here i am i thought you said you didn't want to come down yeah i thought you weren't coming down you can't get rid of me that easily yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was on a flight and the guy behind me is this old man and he had his uh window shade pulled down and you know how sometimes when you're going down the runway to take off you'll go a long way taxiing mm-hmm. down and he was talking to this guy behind me he's from another country he's talking about cricket and we're <laughs> cricket wireless. Now the yeah, sport of the sporting uh, event. <laughs> Good night. I don't think anybody's talking about cricket. Oh, O'Reilly wireless. and cricket on this side of the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, who, okay. yeah. I think when cricket came out, I don't think people ever gotten like. I don't think you do talk to a seat behind you about it. <laughs> like I don't. I mean, even when and cricket was like the first phone I had. I don't think I ever talked to another table about it. I didn't bring a stranger in. And that was when it was invented. Yeah. Okay. My bad. So well, anyway, the sport. Anyway, we've been going- 999, huh? 
Unlimited texting? Yeah. <laughs> Does it work everywhere? Does it go dead a lot? He goes, no, 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 no. I'm on it right now. I got it right now. <laughs> yeah. Those are the next slides that Aaron's get. It's yeah. cricket wireless slides. Yeah. <laughs> So we were taxiing down the runway to take off, and we've been on there a while. And I'm saying the guy beside me, "Have we landed? We haven't even taken off yet." Yeah, yeah. And he thought we had landed because it, it was just so funny to me that. And the guy beside was like, "No, no, no, no. We're we 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 are not landed yet." That's pretty much the story. I've just never heard a guy so out of it, so zoned yeah, out that we had not even taken off yet, and he thought we had already landed. They because yeah. they were in that conversation, and he was older. He was from another country. I don't know if that had anything to yeah. do with it. But and he had his window shade down, yeah. and then I think he was like, I, I can tell now right. we're just, yeah. And he's like, Have we landed? And then the whole flight, he would just take calls, full conversation, <laughs> call people on you it. Think he had using that uh, cricket, dude. I guess so. Cricket works up <laughs> high. I mean, he was like, Hello, and he was like, Hey, I'm on a flight, you know. I got, yeah. he would just have full conversations, and no one stopped him. Nope, just laughed, had a great time, and just lived it up. Yeah, <laughs> and you're talking about in yeah. the air, he's got the how does he get a signal that high in the air? You can do Wi-Fi calling with Cricket know. if yeah. you get with it cricket. all set up. You can do Wi-Fi calling. I'll get like FaceTimes if yeah, I want Wi-Fi. I feel like Aaron's getting side Cricket money that he's not I'd telling anybody about. I'd love to get some. He's getting, he's getting sponsors yeah. that nobody's talking about. Listen, you give me, you, you give me a th- Put me free up month. Boost Mobile, dude. Promo I'll take anybody. Aaron. <laughs> Boostmobile.com. Yeah. Promo code Aaron Land. <laughs> they... Oh. uh yeah, cricket. I remember having my first. I had the 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 phone that was just like the black phone that you you know that was not a flip phone. It was just a straight phone. No, mm-hmm. it wasn't a flip one. Have you seen the new flips? No. Those new flip phones. It's like an iPhone that just bends in half. Yeah. Have you seen those? Is yeah. it? Yeah. I, the I've screen just bends in half. Yeah, it's not an iPhone though. It's no, but but what I mean is it's just one screen and that just folds down. That's where they get you. Like, cause iPhone, like they have some other like iPhone just makes the same phone. And you're like, I would like to try different phones, but then you got to leave the well, network. That, that closing thing, that was the one thing I lo- like. I mean, there was something so amazing about having a phone and talking to somebody, mm-hmm. and then just just doing that. Just the, just the. Yeah. the oh, that person is just gone. Ending now, the call aggressively. Yeah. yeah, it's just a, it's just a phone and just fold the screen, just fold right, in the, right in the middle. That. Yeah, does he? Where he talked about how you did. Now you just have to go. Boop. Yeah, or maybe his was like slamming the. Hard yeah. line down. Yeah. That feels that feels more. But I feel like it's very Tony Soprano. When the Sopranos was on, he was always mad about something. He's always slamming his cell phone and throwing it. Mm-hmm. No? no one? He yeah. flipped it. He yeah. would have had, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, this week, uh, you know, I did want to talk about, too. I, was, I, was thinking, I almost thought we could talk about comedy. I know people talk about it a lot. But I, uh, it was like this weekend, I was like, I loved the comedy. Yeah. We talked a lot about comedy, lot. like how to do comedy, you know, like I mean, just, you uh, literally we, you, we had a conversation and it was it blew my mind so much that literally while you were on stage, I pulled by I started redoing things that I like that I was doing on stage. Like I just redoing them all in my notebook. Well, it's like fun to like, you know, it's like I don't know. It's like I feel like you're, you know, like if you do it a long time, it's just crazy, dude. It's so crazy how like when you first start, you know, nothing. And then. You hit 10 years and you think, all right, I know something. And you're like, you don't, you don't know anything. You know enough. You do a good show. And then uh, now I'm at 18, 2003, right? I'm almost at 19 years. And, uh, and not that I still, I won't know everything. Uh, but you just start knowing like, oh, uh, like you just get it more. And it just takes time. Yeah. You, there's no, there's no trick. It takes a long time. It takes a very, very long time. Do you time. find that as you're doing it longer, you think less about the mechanics of it, and now it's all just second nature in a way where you can just kind of walk out there? It's, and, or we, do you still think about those Well, things? we talked about, I think you start becoming funny. So you, something, you, you can say stuff funny. Yeah. And I don't, I can't even, I don't know why. I don't know if I can really describe it. Mm-hmm. So you can say something funny. So now I'm just looking for situations. And I rely that I know I can make this funny. So now you're not, I'm not trying to write a joke. I'm just looking for something to happen. And then I can make a joke with it. Mm-hmm. And that's what you end up doing. And it's like, you know, Lucy Case said it once where you, 
I remember saying once, he goes, he goes, you don't know anything about comedy until 20 years. And I remember just thinking like, that's so like, A, it was like so out of reach that you're uh -huh. like, so no one knows it until 20 years. Uh huh. But I mean, I, 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 as you get closer, I get, I get more of what he means. And I don't, I wouldn't say it as abruptly as that, as that no one knows it 20 years, but I would say it takes a long time to get, you just, it, it's a good change. You change. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And you just get, it's like anything. Everybody needs experience. And if you want to cr be good at a, a, a craft, you it takes 20 years, man. Like, that's just what it's going to take. And you got to die even. You will have moments of like, you know, I'm not like I'm embarrassed of my old specials or anything like that. On Comedy Central, I'm not. Those were the comic that I was then. But then as you get older now, it's just a different kind of thing. And you just do it, you know, and you're just always growing. It's, it's, it's wild. Like I, when we were talking, cause it's good to talk. Cause it's like, I'm reminded. And then I learned stuff that like, I'm like, Oh yeah. Like you just know this stuff more. I know how to like, you know, it's like telling jokes or telling stories. And it's, I don't know. I just, this weekend I was like, I love it so much. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I told you when you, when we had that conversation, but it was like, it was like, I feel more inspired by hearing you talk for 30 minutes than I have any other thing that I've ever read, any other spot, you know, any, any other like inspirational, anything that I've ever read, listened to, you know, I, it all went out the window and I, like, like I said, I pulled my thing out and just started changing, writing stuff down, writing, reworking everything. Yeah. I'm a big, put yourself in the middle of everything. Yeah. So like, that's what we were talking about, where it's like anything that, like any jokes that I have in this new hour, there's a couple that I've already pulled out because I feel like I'm making fun of someone else. And if I feel like, you know, it's not like if it's, if it's me and my wife or it's me and my daughter, or me and my family, like that's not making fun. That's our family. Like that's the situation that we're in. But when I feel like I'm making fun of a stranger or something, mm -hmm. I'm like someone that's not there to defend themselves, like I'll, you know, I'm not saying I don't do it, but... I, there's been a couple jokes that I'm like, eh, I'm just kind of not doing because I'm like, it feels, I just don't feel like I can ever really get behind it because I don't, I'm like, even though it's a funny situation, mm -hmm. like I have one of them is like a funny situation, but then it's, and the joke works, but then you're like, I don't know, it just feels mean or something like, I'm, and then I'll end up, I just pull, I just end up going, not doing it. And I, but you, I try to put myself in everything. You put yourself in anything, you can make fun of anything in anybody because you're making fun of you and then it becomes about your reaction to yes. it or how you handled it yes and less about them yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's why being you know it's like i talk about being dumb a lot or like you know because it's like it is it's about me not knowing the situation mm -hmm. i can't be the one that's always like you're not doing it the way i mean even though i say it's but even me telling you that you gave me a thumbs up in a text is like that's us right and that's right. being like, I don't think you should have done that or something. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. But it's like, but it's it's close. I totally it's get it. It's me and you talking. Yeah. I would never say that. I would never do a joke where this guy I don't know right. did that and just trash that guy. Mm -hmm. But I can say it to you. Because it's like you talking Especially when he's right here in front of you. Yeah. Right. And he needs to hear it. Yeah. Well, I always feel like whenever... In con front, oh, that, <laughs> that came off me when you just moved on. Mm. I go, he needs to hear it. You start talking, I'm like, huh? I'm just kidding. Like, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think that, like, and that's even before, you know, um, I started kind of changing things up. I I always, if, you, if you're a comic and you use broad strokes, we're like, when you start using people groups, like, all these people do this, all these people do that. Well, there's always going to be people in that group. They're like, well, I'm not like that. I'm in this group. So I always, whenever, because I, you know, I went to a Christian college and I always use the Jesus's parable. Um, like that's the bracket that I used. So, cause Jesus would always teach life lessons, but he'd use very specific stories. Mm. So what I would do is I would, I would, you, I would still do kind of like the broad stroke thing, but I would tell a very specific story about, I'm not saying all these things are like this, but I'm saying in this instance, this is what happened. This is what I learned from it. And you can take from it what you want. Mm -hmm. But that's what I've always enjoyed is being able to, like, uh, like when you put yourself in a situation, people really do enjoy it a lot more. And you, what's cool about what you did is, like, I was just a little bit into it. And you're like, no, no, you got to go all the way. Yeah, like he it. had a joke. I won't give the joke away, but it was a joke where he's had something that happened. And he was, and he just made it, like, you know, if it was like, 
this happened at Arby's and he was saying it happened at McDonald's. Well, I just, I was using a generic, I just, yeah. I was like, I was at a place. A, yeah, yeah, at a getting place, a thing. generic. And I was like, make it specific. I go, what was the real story? And then he tells me what the real story is. And I'm like, everybody knows that. And then that's what makes stuff relatable. Cause you're like, it is, sometimes we tend to like make stuff not be the, mm. the actual thing. You like, make it the thing. Tell exactly what it is. It's easier to write that way. You're telling a, it's the truth. People are going to relate to it more because they go, I know that place. If I had a star, if I said that Starbucks order, which I had to do on once because I couldn't say Starbucks on tonight's show and it didn't work because I said I went to, I, mean, I don't know if I said Starbucks, but I was like, uh, you know, one was like the Pet Boys joke I did somewhere and I couldn't say Pet Boys. And so mm-hmm. I said, I go to this mechanic shop and it's like the joke kind of works, but like it doesn't work like when I say Pet Boys because mm-hmm. you know Pet Boys mm-hmm. and you're now in that store in your head. So anything that happens, you're picturing me and that store. And that's what makes it work. So you got to name the actual place because then someone goes, I know that. Oh, yeah. that's Well, you're even good about, even if you don't know the place, like the the dog bakery in Mount Juliet, um, making that work. And then people react a different way because that's so unique. They know that's true. Yeah. Um, You're you're really good about that. Leanne Morgan, who I work with a lot, is really good about that. Talking about- Yeah, because everybody doesn't know where you- But when it's a true thing- Yeah. Then they can put their self in it. Specificity is important. Oh, it's the most. Yeah. It's the most. Because you can, you know, like if you ever make up stuff, you make it up in what you think. You thinking when that woman was going to do it at the elevator, mm-hmm. that's you making that up. Mm-hmm. So you thinking all that stuff. Now, those are thoughts that people will have. Mm-hmm. But if you did that as a joke, it would be like, you can make up whatever you want. Because that's in your head, you think what she thinks. Mm-hmm. You're not. Throwing it on her, it's right. you imagining. That's it. right. And that's mm-hmm. what you're so good at. I think I've said on this before. New comics especially will come up with a scenario where, so I said this to her and she yeah. said this to me. And then people are like, all right, that's that didn't really happen. Yeah. But you're good about saying, well, what if this had happened? Yeah. And then you can just do whatever you want to say. Yeah. Because you're not tricking them. Yeah. You're not saying this really happened. You're saying, what if? Yeah. So like the hitting a home run off a walk joke yeah you talk about what if this 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 you didn't say all this stuff really happened i mean yeah, that, that really happened that really happened but the stuff that you put in but then i go back and say what if right mm-hmm. you know and then then i that whole last run is i'm giving thoughts to everybody out that's there, right which are that's the funniest that's the funny thoughts i can give that's right so that's the joke that's the being funny that's the you know the setup is literally what happened mm-hmm. And then, the other, you know, and like another one that we talked about, like my McDonald's joke with Lewis, uh, where I take a bite of the burger and he doesn't do it. Like that joke is so Dan, as I've said before, Dan Soder was there. It was me, Dan Soder, and Lewis. I told Dan to take the bite of Lewis's burger. He did. And then we wrapped it back up. And then Lewis came back. So, and all that stuff happened. And uh, when I first told that story, we were all telling it. And then it was like, I've, it was almost like we could race to see you could tell the story first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, you know, we could never get it. Finally, I got it. And, but then I, I took Dan. I would say Dan at the beginning. But then he had to go out just because he was like, you got to look at some stuff. You're like, it doesn't really matter that Dan's there. Like, you know, it's like that gets a little too confusing when you're trying to. So sometimes you just do that. Does it matter if he, if Dan, if the story mattered, Dan, I would have kept Dan in. But the fact that it didn't matter, and it was me and Dan both playing this on him, mm-hmm. you go, all right, I'm going to just take Dan out, because I, I, it's just too complicated right there. Mm. And then I go, this is a happen, blah, blah. I do Lewis's reaction. And then you do, what do you think? You know, Then you get to do that part of it, and that's the fun part. That's the part that you get a, you can do whatever. You can be as crazy as you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. I just loved it. This weekend was just so good. It's, it's also good, I think, that I think a lot of times uh, younger comics, and I'm experience, experiencing this more and more when I, the more younger comics that I meet, where people get so frustrated. They're like, I'm not doing the things that you're doing, or you're not doing the things, like, you're not doing the things you want, and you get a lot of real focused on what's going on at your level. Mm-hmm. And my whole thing is, is the, the ladder above you goes so high. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like most people in the scene that I came up in, they can't even see where I'm at. Yeah. And I look at somebody like you and I can't even like yours. Like it's like, so the ladder just goes so high. 
it's unbelievable. So the, to get caught up in like little small petty things or like, oh, this person took a joke. It's like, listen, if you're great, write another one. It doesn't like matter. it doesn't it doesn't matter. Just it just, just doesn't. Your your vision should always be up yeah. and forward. Like if you get stuck in the mud, that you're always yeah. gonna be there. Yeah. It's I always say that with like if it, I've had a lot of jokes where someone else did and I don't think they stole them. Uh some I had them out before, some I didn't. And uh it's just like a lot of a lot of jokes. The joke still is not as much as everybody. I th- I believe it's not as much as everybody thinks it is. It's a lot more parallel thinking. Like, yeah, dude, we're all writing about the same kind of thing. But I always looked at it uh, as a uh, I didn't. That joke wasn't original enough. That's what I always looked at it. So if I did it and someone else did it, uh, I either hoped I did it before or I, you know, just so I could be like. You know, you feel better about it. But then I also looked at it as like, all right, well, that was too much of a joke. Yeah. And that was too not, that wasn't original enough. And I wasn't original enough. That's something Marin told me. Like, you know, just write about yourself and talk about, no one can steal that. No one can steal anything from yourself. And I'm, again, I said we say steal. I'm not trying to say stealing happens all the time. But no one's going to write a joke similar to yours. Yeah, they're not going to replicate Because it. you can't. And then you can talk about literally everything. Because then you're not even, even if you are somewhat talking on a topic that's like maybe a topic that's been talked about, it's you going through it. Mm -hmm. And then no one's like, he's still, you're like, no, dude, he's just doing his show. Like it's, that happened to him. He's just telling us it happened. He's not relying on that. You know, I, in this new hour, like I talk about like 12 and under eating free. I'm not going to give away the joke. And like my parents had no money when we grew up. And so we always had to go eat where kids eat free. That's been done a million times. But like that's in the setup to this other thing. Like, but I do a little quick joke about that. But like it's I don't even feel like I'm like, you know, because mm-hmm. when you when I was younger, the whole joke would have just been 12 and under eat free. Yeah. That would have been the whole joke. Now that's a setup to get into the joke. And that's like what changes. And if you're a young comic listening to this, I mean, yeah, you just have to like, and I don't want to like, you know. Just keep getting better and just take the wins. You will get better. And after you get one year, you're going to always look back after a year and you get three years, you're going to go like, dude, I was awful at one year. I was terrible. That's a win. You want to be terrible then. And then, and you know, not saying everybody's going to think you were terrible, but you, you personally. Right. And so you always got to go like, oh yeah. And then, and then the next year you're like, I didn't know what I was doing in year three. Mm-hmm. And now I'm at five years and I'm like, I'm like, I wasn't even a real comic then. And like, those are, that's how you know you're winning and you're moving forward. And so if you don't think you're, if you don't, can't look back and think that you were better now than you were then, you're stuck. And you feel, if you ever feel stuck, that means you're trying to grow out of it. That's why you get stuck because you're trying to get better and you're trying to get like, and so you're kind of stuck in like riding this old thing and you'll be able to see it's so it's like so I love it so much. And you'll be able to write a joke like you'll be able to have your act where you can have like old stuff and the new stuff and they feel different. And the audience won't laugh as hard at the old stuff that they do the new stuff. And even though the old stuff could be better than the new stuff or you think it's better, it's just you're not telling it mm-hmm. the way that yeah. you told it. Yeah. And it's and that's like you just realize, oh, like I've gotten a lot better. Yeah, that's why this stuff gets more personal. Mm-hmm. That's when you could always tell, like when people come up and mention like the Krispy Kreme thing they talk about, because that was right. a real thing. And you, and so that the last night, the guy that came up, Steve Insley, my dad's friend, that he goes, but Krispy, they always mention your joke. Yeah, they will mention a joke if you do something relatable. That's when the audience comes up and goes that joke. But if you make it up, they don't even, they don't remember it. It doesn't stick with them. Right, but if you put them in the position of saying the thing, Krispy Kreme, and that experience that you had with it, they then come up and go that Krispy Kreme, like you yeah. know, because they know that feeling. You're trying to make them. Well, you it, can feel the connection. Like, yeah, it's weird. Even like, it's not even like a laugh. It's not. It, it's. It, I don't even know how to explain it. But what, like, because like the last show you did when we had that talk, I said the restaurant, which is Schlotsky's. Mm. I do I do a thing about a, getting a big sandwich. Yeah. Slosky's Deli. And, yeah, yeah, and they have their large sandwiches enormous. And uh but it's the I I was not saying the name of the place cuz I just wanted to I wanted to get to where I was getting yeah. as fast as I could being efficient. Yeah. And then he was like you need to say you need to say all these things that you that you just told me 
And I just started by saying the name. I didn't want to change too much right before I went on stage. And this was yeah, this is yeah, he five literally he I he's literally he's full. I mean, he's full. I'm like, this is like when Laura's trying to go to bed. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, and hey, blah, 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 blah. it's like eleven thirty at night, and I'm like telling her like I all mean, these ideas. I mean, Nate's literally being comedy yeah. Yoda to me. And it's like, and like, and Travis is like, "Hey, man, uh, we have one." He goes, I'm "One minute." Travis has got the headset on. Yeah. He's like, "All right." <laughs> I'm walking to him to the stage. I'm like, "And then do the and then you know." And uh, but I said, but I said the name of the place, yeah. and just in all my experience, I could feel the connection was different. Oh, I could yeah. feel it was different. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many times you've given me something, and in my brain, I want to think because as a comic, you're all you're all you're still a competitor. So you're always like, oh well, he's I can I mean, I know he's he's right about a lot, but yeah. he's not right about this. Yeah, and then I do I always everything that Nate's ever asked me or told me to do, I've always done it, even when I was like, I don't I don't know about this, and, uh, and it doesn't work all the time. And at the but end, but it, I mean, I'll tell you at the end, it's always yeah. like, yeah, well, he was it's, right. It's 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 not even about giving you like tags. So people like ask that, and we have talked about this with the comedy episode or any tags, yeah, or I don't know. So like. uh People give you tags a lot. That's what comics call. Like, so if you give me a tag on a joke or I, you know, it's like, hey, what have you said this at the end of that joke? And then uh, you go, oh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to remember. I've had, they don't always work. It's hard because sometimes you get tags and it's not in your voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bob, it's, the Bobcat thing. That was like the first time I'd ever heard you say that. You, yeah. What was the, it? The, the, the carpet, the, 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 the playing in the Christian. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, you stole it, and you're like, oh, I forgive you for stealing. Yeah, yeah. That was like oh, the Bobcat. Yeah, yeah Goldwood. Yeah, yeah, gave me that tag. Yeah. Yes. So that was a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah. So in that joke was uh, the, the. You're. I mean, you're a better the, comic yeah. now. So. Yeah. The Bobcat. Just trash the Bobcat. <laughs> like Bobcat, very nice. Well, I just I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. I, I wanted that. to use I'm a, a better I, comic. I wanted to use an old there. example. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait, Uh I said the church thing. I think I remember it now. And I was in Atlanta, and he was there. And then I was, and I did my playing basketball. I got cut. You know that joke. And then he said, uh, "I was like, someone stole my ball." And uh, and then he said, "You should say I forgive you." And like, so he gave me that tag. Like that's a tag. Mm-hmm. And so then I said it. it. Doesn't always work when you get tags. It's actually pretty hard for you to take tags. I don't. I don't think you should be able to take tags that much. I don't think you're in. If you're if you can take too many tags, I don't think you've got your voice down. Uh, and your voice is too generic. So if like if if everybody can take a tag, if like everybody gives you a tag, you're like I'll, I can use that. That's probably not good. You should be able to be like I can't say that. And I think that means when you start getting to that point, you've kind of got your voice. Yeah. And that means you're kind of on track to your voice because you're going like I, I that's not how I talk or I won't I can't say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you find yourself though? Um, probably not now because you it's rare you're ever on a show where you're not the headliner, but I still, a lot less than I used to, but I still, if I work with you for a while or Leanne or anybody, I find myself still kind of wanting to get right like them, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still find myself wanting to emulate people who are doing really well. Yeah, but you got to just. It gets less and less, but it still happens. It it happens and that continues to happen for a long time. I mean, I had that that Jason clip that we talked about that's on YouTube. Uh, I mean, I sound like Jay, Big Jay, Patrice O'Neill, Dave Attell, and Kurt Metzger, like all in one. Mm-hmm. And it's because I was, we were hanging out with them. They were, you know, ahead of me and I'm watching them every night. And so you would always sound like that. So you always do kind of have that sound. I think you get out of that. And I think you get out of it on your own. You just got to make sure, you know, it's like you, you do get, as, be aware of it. Feel yourself when you feel that sounded like something that person would say mm. or they did something like that. Just somewhat be aware of it. And I think you do eventually get out of it on your own. But you got to get your voice. I don't, you won't if you don't have your voice. You got to find your voice. And all this being said, this is me. If you're doing comedy like I do, like if, it's, if you're somewhat like me, uh, you know, if you're like Jeselnik, Jeselnik does a lot of jokes. Very, very funny. Norman. Uh, Norman, yeah. a lot of jokes. So like, if you go the, that route too, it's then go that route. Like then don't mix in. Like you might have a little truth that makes you think of that joke, but you can't, I don't think you can really, it's like you're mixing both. It's like be one or the other, either be in. And so that other way works too. I can only speak for the way that I do it. That other way works, but you got to do it. You got to 
just do that way. That way, the audience, when they fit there, they feel like, well, I think he's making all this up. But they like, but you like that because mm-hmm. now you get to watch a bunch of jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like all of this. And so it's like you kind of go that way. You know, you want almost the audience to go like, yeah, I'm not going to even go up and go, did that happen? Right. I'm going to mm-hmm. go, I love that joke about that. You're trying to make them believe what you're selling. You're not trying to confuse them. It's yeah. like be very exact what you're what you're presenting to them. So they don't so they're not like be one way or the other, but don't be in the middle. Don't be in the middle. Or, or like make it, a just, make just a decision. Happened. I think you can do that for everything in life. Make a decision. Make a choice. Go that route. Stick to that choice. People can do that. If they if they can't, that's how people connect is they make a choice. When they watch Norman, they connect. Because Norman's doing all those jokes, and they go, I'm in there for a, a, a great time, and it's going to be joke, 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 joke. Yeah. That's why I say my the comic I would pay to watch more than anybody. I would only comic I would pay to go see is Dave Attell. And Dave Attell's not clean. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Talk but, with children. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, but <laughs> no one's, you're not going to, no one's as fun as Dave Attell. Like, no one's, he's a joke teller. It's, it's just rapid jokes. It's like I mean, he's the the best to ever do it like that. I think even watching him live, like like oh, watching him live is the whole thing because it's like you you a lot of times you watch comics that can do that and then you watch them again and it's the same that you're just like oh you just you've built that thing but he's so like so quick oh, on his so, feet yeah so yeah. fast so funny yeah I mean I remember I remember one time I was at the cellar I told you this this weekend yeah, yeah. but we were at the I was at the cellar and when you hang out at the comedy cellar in New York. There's only one bathroom in the place, and it's downstairs in the showroom. So if you're upstairs eating at the restaurant, you have to go downstairs through the showroom. Which is very funny. Just for There's people that don't even know a comedy club is downstairs. I mean, most everybody now is because comedy cellar is super famous. But there was times people would just walk up there to go eat, and they're like, where's the bathroom? They're like, oh, downstairs. Mm -hmm. And they have no – they're like – they have to walk through a crowd, (laughs) which is very funny to be like – Hey, I just came to eat. Yeah. And there's a chance you're going to get trash now. Uh huh. And I mean, not even Romano's down there. Yeah. What's going on? That's (laughs) crazy. Yeah, it's bananas. And it's not even like you're like in the back of the room. You walk like right next to the stage. It's one person and then the comic. Literally, you, the the row that you walk in, there's at one table. I mean, you're, you could, you, if you walked with your hands out, you would touch the comedian. (laughs) Yeah. It's crazy. That's why the com, that's why the seller's so great. That feel, that's New York. That's like, yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah. And so you're always close quarters. So I go downstairs and it's Attell and uh, Jeff Ross is on stage. And they were doing a thing where they were kind of working on their, they did a special where it's like they bring audience members up and they roast them or whatever. And I'm walking down the stairs. And as soon as I emerge, like you can see my silhouette in the door. <laughs> I see Dave look up and I see his eyes light up, which is a very, you're like, oh no. If you ever see a comic, like if you've ever been in the crowd before, you'll see a comic kind of like lock eyes with you and they get, and you're like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> and, and, and then I guarantee you, he peppered me with so many jokes. I mean, it had to be 10 jokes on my way to the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom. Like, I got to go. I have to go back. I have to go back. <laughs> and the worst part is when you open the door to the cellar, there's a light between the <laughs> the door. So, and he knows it's me because that light for normal people is like a little bit of a sliver. And this one, the door has to come all the way open. So, <laughs> so he knows it, he knows it's coming. He knows the big guy's coming. And as soon as I come back, it's like he was waiting for me. He's he was I thought he was waiting for me. And then as soon as I come back. Uh, he just hits me with joke, 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 just making fun of me the whole time. And then I was like, "You're at the end. You're like, I, there's no, there's no other joke that he could possibly do. What? There's no way he could yeah. top what he just did." And I get to the door and I'm almost out. And he goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the six borough." And I was just like, "Oh my!" Just the whole room the goes bananas. Burrow. And it's like, you ever get hit with a joke that's so so crazy? You just stop in place and you're like. Uh, like just yeah, like he uh-huh. like you got nailed so much, and then you just had to uh-huh. walk up those steps, just <laughs> extra <laughs> you're hitting yeah. extra hard. The yeah. sixth burrow. That's great. Wow. He wa- I watched him do. Someone stood up in the front row once, uh, and they were going to the bathroom, and uh, but he's just, the guy like stood up and he goes, "Where are you going?" He goes, "Nowhere." He goes, "No, I mean right now." it's so funny and the guy i mean it's the best it's he's there's just guys he's just his jokes are just so good i mean it's just so good he had the one story uh i don't think i've ever told this one but it was uh 
Tell, Ben Bailey, uh, host of Cash Cab, and Joe DeRosa. And they're standing outside of the comedy cellar. So, and Tell is like, a lot of his fans, especially the Insomniac was still on the air. Yeah. And uh, on Comedy Central, if you if y'all might know David Tell from that, he hosted his show. And I mean, that's another one that was very, like, you, that was a very David Tell uh, show. Because it was like, he was just rapid fire, making the jokes. And uh, so, he's sitting there. So let's say your breakfast is uh, Ben Bailey, <laughs> you're Joe DeRosa. And so David tells us, stand there talking to him, and then a guy that's real drunk comes up and starts grabbing Dave and being like, I love Insomniac, bah. and he's like, you know, like kind of grabbing him hard, and Dave's like, all right, man, thank you. know, He's saying thank you, he appreciates it, but it's also like, dude, you grabbed me. Like, yeah. he doesn't love that. And then uh, no one's saying anything. They're just like, Ben and Joe are just standing there watching it. And he goes, oh, he goes, let me introduce you to my two friends. Just stands there and watches it happen. Which <laughs> <laughs> is <just> so funny. <laughs> just stands there. Oh, let me introduce you to my two friends. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just special. You know, it's like, I love it. Like, that's what I like. I, this, this, this run going out, A, people are uh, very excited to be coming out. But it's like, it's made me like, just you fall back in love with it more where you're, you're just like it's so good, and like talking to you about it, and you're like it's just there's nothing better. Does it make you very thankful on Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, it does. I'm thankful for everybody that comes out. And that's the other thing too is I think a lot of it is like you got to make it. It's about that audience. It's not about you. It's about them. It's about you know you're they can walk away and then you have nothing. So everything that you make has to be. You know, I think a lot of times the entertainment that can be, it gets hard because you get, you can become a big name and a star and whatever. And you think it's about, everything's about you. You have people helping you, you blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's, you, you have none of that unless they come. If that audience doesn't come, I mean, it is borderline, I, probably 50, 50, maybe in favor of them. Mm. They decide mm -hmm. you have to be good enough to get them to come in, but then you have to stay good enough to keep them. And if you don't stay good enough to keep them, you will lose it. And so you got to always look at everything to be like, I've got to try to be better. Not saying you're gonna everything's gonna be perfect because it's. I mean, it's very hard, but you just have to be like, it's about that audience and about them coming out. And it's and they decide everything. That's every TV show you write, every show, movie, all that stuff. That's what people lose out of touch with. It's the Hollywood, like, it's not. It's about them, dude. It's about making them come. They decide that, you know. And I think people forget that. That's one of the reasons I, I, I even the whole tour, like we're we're playing these great places, and it's so easy. Like when you do so many of those things, you're like, you know, you kind of lose you know, this theater, that theater, and it's just like, no, no, dude, dude, like Elvis was here. Yeah, you know, you 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 go on this wall, and all these legends are behind you. Steve Martin was in the theater that we were in last night. Yeah, and Martin Short together. Yeah, you know, it took both of them to sell out the thing that you did. Yeah, you know. <laughs> They, you got to gas him up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. But it's, I make him give me. I go give me a little pump. pump. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. But it's like it's a thing where it's it's like you you also need somebody. You took the fifty thousand dollar friend. Yeah, it's like that's what you 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 got to have somebody around. He's like, dude, this is great. Enjoy this. Mo like enjoy the moments because you yeah. never and and like I think it's something we forget to do a lot yeah. is. I mean, like everybody at this table, we all have do doing amazing things. You know, yeah. Mr. Opry over here, he's doing it just as much as you yeah. are. You know, Bates is doing yeah, yeah, just as much. We do it more. I've done than it, I've done yeah. it way, yeah, yeah. way more than both. Listen, of them. Listen, yeah, I, I didn't. I don't want him to get. I don't <laughs> yeah. want him to lose. I've his never sold a single yeah. ticket there, but I've done <laughs> yeah. it. He's been on the Opry, but the, yeah, like that's the fifty thousand friend dollar thing, friend thing that we talked about is like just having like, especially this is specific for this our business, but it's like having your. You know, I, I'm still, I still talk to my. Like my friends from high school, like I, that's who I talk to almost the most. And tra my Travis, my tour manager, me and him, I've known him, we've known each other since we were fourteen. Uh, and so it's like you got to have just people that are like, you know, my sister's about to start working for us. Like you have my family, I have a lot of people that because you look, you get a, in a world. A lot of people say yes to you. A lot of people, you know, if I ask for something, a lot of people go, "We'll make it happen." And there is a world where I do need that stuff to happen. Like if I'm like, I want this. It's this is driving me crazy. And like some of it's I'm trying to stay uh I don't want to become miserable on the road. Like I don't it's very hard and you're gone a lot. I'm home today and I'm gone, you know, like so there's some stuff that's like, you know, it's like yeah, I, you, you do little things where you're like the hotel will be nice, 
or you do, you know, some stuff is like, just be like, I'm just trying not to, I don't want to lose my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also, but you have, but I still, I'm going to hire my sister who's going to not listen to me once. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you got to have those where you're not, everybody's going to say yes to, you know, your yeah. friends are trying, my Travis is going to oh. like, you're dumb. <laughs> no, and like, you know, but then I got them. That's why you guys, that's why all of us are together because no matter where we get, it's still, you're, Vecchione will make fun of me, you make fun of me, like, we all make fun of each other. It's like, that's what you're doing. You're keeping it to try to be like, you know, I was, I, I say now you want to build like a city around you like that, but it's a city of your people that you trust and that people that are not going to be, you know, they're not just, cause you have your people outside of that, that are going to be, you know, you know, they advise you. I mean, my managers and agents are really good at like, they advise you on what to do, whatever. And, uh, you know, but you can tell people, you know, I could say I can do whatever. You know, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And someone goes, all right, I got to do it. So you need someone that's like, yo, dude, you can't. That's insane. You go, that's right. That was crazy. I'm sorry that I asked that. Uh, and that's, you know, it's like that's the that's the the point. I don't know. I think. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 that that's you doing that is the most important thing because my dad is like that. I mean, my dad has been very successful in business before, but it's like he always keeps his – his circle is always just, uh, just yeah. the guys are just like, why, why are you doing that? Yeah. Why are you doing that? Why do you, why do you, why do you need a, why need a, why do you need a gold gun case? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, what are you, what are you doing? That's a very specific, it's a very, it's, specific. It's a very specific <laughs> reference. Just taking that, your advice. Yeah, yeah exactly. There, there, there it is. It's a more right specific there. story. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's do what's, so Thanksgiving. So this is Thanksgiving week. Let's just talk about what to do Thanksgiving. Yeah, and, where does it rank uh, on uh, you, you, Halloween? You said is one of your very favorite. Where do you, you rank said on it was Halloween? your favorite? You said it was your favorite. Oh, your very was my favorite. favorite. Very yeah. favorite. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, do oh, where did you know? Comment. All right. Uh, I have one little side. I had a side bet going. Christian one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, Nate Lance spinoff. Yeah, <laughs> Nate Lance spinoff. I go, I go right. I go. Do you feel it right? And he goes, I do. And I go right. Yeah. And I go. All right. uh, next week would be me alone. <laughs> I go right. It just doesn't connect with them, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, so Thanksgiving. I uh, I don't. I mean, I guess I like the the food, but if I, I'm not a. You know, not the most food. I like if the food's made the way again that I like it. Like where it's like, and that's how we always make. Is if it's ham, corn, mac and cheese, mashed. You know, I'm not a big stuffings guy. Uh, ice cream, like I like that savory stuff. Yes, like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Honey baked ham is, I love it. Yeah. Uh, not a big turkey guy. No, he. I I despise it. In fact, my biggest fantasy was always there was a commercial. <laughs> What am I? What? 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 What did, did I do? Something? What? What did I do? Uh, just your biggest fantasy. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm telling you. It's yeah, speaking turkey. of turkey, my uh, biggest yeah. fantasy. No, no, because no. yeah. I, I think it's a walk-in cooler for him. <laughs> I'm when it, when I heard him say it, I was yeah. like, man, he's not yeah, wrong. He gets it. He's yeah, not he wrong. Gets, he gets it. <laughs> I'm a little further into DXL than yeah. he is. So, but uh, I, uh, um, I there was a commercial where it was uh, basically it was a, a farmer had to go execute the turkey for thanksgiving and the turkey gave uh the guy a, a bud light yeah and the the next shot you see the guy at thanksgiving dinner and there's a pizza in the middle of the in the middle of the thanksgiving yeah. table and i was like man dude if we could have pepperoni pizza for thanksgiving that'd be like the best thanksgiving yeah like i always wanted to have a thanksgiving where it was just like just, all the favorite foods just as a like, oh, as a yeah. side dish just no just pizza every there. just just, oh, you just get your favorite i think just, you could do it that it'd be a table filled with favorite yeah, foods yeah yeah like you'd be like pizza mac and cheese a hamburger mcdonald's hamburger i mean like, even like know, pizza yeah. rolls i mean just yeah. just go crazy just it should be a, a table of insanity cuz all thanksgiving is like i i associate it with sports yeah so football is, this you is know, your, day before Thanksgiving is your Super Bowl is what you're I love saying. it. I love it. Because <laughs> yeah. the day before, the day of, the day after, yeah. there's great sports. It's your great. dad's a big cook. Huge. Great I mean, yeah. he was ready to – my dad met him for the first time yeah. and was – my dad has an insane uh, grill, like a bunch of them. Yeah. And he's like, you know, next time, I'll bring you some brisket. And he's like, why don't you just cook for these like, – and my dad was like, I'll cook for the whole show. Yeah. Like the whole venue. Like he sell it. he wanted yeah. to wheel it out and start selling things. <laughs> yeah. And then my dad tried to get him to come do his venue. And he tried yeah. to he tried to get my dad to come. He's like he tried to get Nate to, to do a yard. field. Yeah. yeah. Justin yeah. Like, Bombs always makes his stuff. 
Cinnamon rolls. She made cinnamon rolls that uh, Ricky, our bus driver, thought they were burn ins and put them in the refrigerator and ruined them all. <laughs> ruined them. Ruined the two pans of the best cinnamon rolls. So, well, I thought it was Boston butt. And I put yeah. it right in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. and they was very fun. I mean, they were all, Ricky was right there. That was the best. I think the sides are the star of the show yes, on Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. I think everybody pretty much agrees with that. I, I don't uh, mind Jason. The uh, turkey's Jason. nice, Jason. a ham. <laughs> You got, you got, I don't even know. <laughs> What's your name, man? Uh, uh, Justin's idea of, of saying, uh, of doing like your favorite foods. I, cause I always like after Thanksgiving, like a day or two after, you, you're, I, I always get like, I go to McDonald's and like, I don't get no pushback from anybody. Cause it's like usually after you eat, like, fa- like feel like fancy food. And then after two days of it, you're like, I just want McDonald's, man. Uh, yeah. And then I just go get like, you're like, I just want something dumb. Like, I don't, this is, I've had too much. Living on the high horse. Yeah. yeah. You know. All right, I had a college. I had a Thanksgiving alone. I was the only friend that didn't go home. It was just me at the dorm. Oh. And I had no money, dude. Oh. I had no money. And then my paycheck hit the bank account the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. And I went, I went to McDonald's, dude. Yeah. And then I went and got some beer. And I did exactly what you described. I just went around and got all my you favorite said, stuff. You said it all yeah. out. And I just <laughs> spread it out in my little dorm room there. And I put on a movie. And I was like, one of the better Thanksgivings oh, yeah. I've ever had. Why did yeah. your family not allow you to come home? I just, I don't think I... <laughs> I don't remember why I didn't go home that year. Did you have to work it's only a year. I, it's only a year that I didn't go home. Did y'all have arguments at the table, right? Debates? Oh, big time. You didn't feel like it. I just felt like this is too much. Yeah. It was it was an election year. I was like, yeah, I can't handle I can't this. I can't handle this. You know, <laughs> it's the top secular holiday. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what it is, is it? Is it a popular holiday? Yeah, we talked about on one of the previous episodes how it's the most traveled holiday, mm-hmm. and I like it for that. I like your family gets together. I do love that. You get to see everybody. Laura loves it. Laura loves that for that reason. Laura's a big, like, she went, She just wants stuff to get the family together. I was surprised. I feel like most things that are tradition, once you delve into what really happened, it's nothing close to what you th- mm-hmm. the images you have. The first Thanksgiving was very much what tradition said it was. It was pilgrims from the Mayflower at Plymouth, the first Thanksgiving, they had a three day feast, just like Jay, uh, Justin. Jason, <laughs> yeah, just like Jason. It's a whole thing now. Uh, At least it's not Aaron. That's all. That's all I care about. That's just like now, Mick. Now they're gonna go. Yeah, yeah you're gonna get Jason. <laughs> at the uh, they celebrated their first successful harvest. They the Native Americans showed up. They invited yeah. them to come eat with them. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much what you think. How do they get them to go? Yeah. You think you got to walk over? Walk and find them. Like, well, they were they in a different town? Like they don't live like. You just got to walk around to like teepees and like other. Like there's no. You ride a horse to another town. Well, the Native, the Native Americans came to them. Like they were having a feast and well, they so showed they're, up. They're, they're near like, the coast What's going on here? too. They're, yeah, I know, but I'm saying like, how do they know? Oh, so they just walk by and go, "What are y'all doing?" Something smells good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like how? And it seemed like they invited them. I'm saying like someone go out. Well, they're and, like, ride well, they, they, they were goes, starving. The uh, the people that landed there because you land and the, yeah. like this is how smart the people that came here were they they landed and they're just like we're just gonna stay right here yeah was, right where we right where we landed so they started cooking well it was but about, they didn't they didn't have any oh I'm sorry you go ahead you're yeah. the history guy it was about a hundred that came over the Mayflower about half of them died so now it's down to fifty the Native Americans taught them how to grow corn oh. how to catch fish stuff like that so they kind of saved their lives so they were yeah and they were friends they were so friends. that's how they yeah they were they they were and helped them out and then they mm-hmm. had this feast and mm-hmm. the uh, Native Americans showed up and they said, "Well, come eat with us." So it was a three day feast. Mm. They said four women did all the cooking. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> 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 they stayed in the kitchen while the guys lived it up. Yeah, it was more like you think simpler times tradition was yeah. than I, I was expecting because you hear all you know every Thanksgiving you hear like, "Oh yeah, because we killed all the Indians and took their whatever." Well, that came later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't I'm, happen, I'm not gonna lie, no. Brian. I, I was waiting for that to come from yeah. you. Yeah, I, I know. Just, yeah, they have bad news. <laughs> yeah, the Oklahoma guess, Red people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least on Thanksgiving, they did get together and eat together. And, yeah, and lived it up. That's, yeah, it was beautiful in 1621, and then. 
1863, Abraham Lincoln made it a national holiday because this woman who wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb kept harassing him for 17 years. Mother Seuss? Mother, Mother Goose? Goose? Yep, no. that's, it. that's her name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a real goose that was a mom. <laughs> it's the only goose that could write. And you don't hear about her as much as you should, you know? A goose that can write stories? That's impressive. <laughs> that's impressive. I think yeah. it should be, I think it was like Jason Voorhees. Like you should have, the country should have known more about Jason Voorhees. <laughs> Mother Seuss? Is that what you were You said Seuss. Uh, my bad. Dr. Seuss. Seuss. I got confused with Dr. Seuss. Someone pointed out that Dr. Seuss tried to use as few words as possible in his books to make a point, and that your special <laughs> did the same thing as far as the number of word count. Like you're uh, like a modern day Dr. Seuss. Ah, uh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but this woman wrote a letter for 17 straight years to the White House trying to get on making a national holiday, and Abraham Lincoln. I mean, this is during the Civil War. I'm sure he's like, like I don't have enough on my plate. He's so busy. Yeah, sure, lady. Just to get her off my back, I'll do this. But it became a national holiday. Uh, 4,500 calories average consumed on Thanksgiving Day. Mm. Those are rookie numbers. Yeah, (laughs) those are rookie numbers in this rack. Those are appetizer numbers. Thanksgiving challenge. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Thanksgiving challenge. 4,500. That's from the night before. Warm up meal. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Forty five hundred. What are they? It's my it, rehearsal yeah. dinner. What is it Tuesday? Come on. <laughs> I have one thing that's forty five hundred. <laughs> yeah. Is there one food that has forty five hundred calories? Oh, I'm that's sure. so many for one for like one thing, man. There are some. If you look at like a Chili's, dude, there are some entrees that have like three thousand calories. Applebee's too. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Applebee's, yeah, yeah. You get one with two salt shakers next to yeah. it. You're like, oh man, this is gonna, yeah. this is getting in the force. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't think about all the calories you're adding. Uh huh. Yeah. The day after Thanksgiving is the busiest day of the year for plumbers. Oh really? Oh man. Oof. Oh, I oh, believe it. That's like real. That's not. Yeah. That's something you don't think. Those about. are rook- those are rookies, though. That's that's yeah. all. I hey, think listen, about. if you're still doing one flush, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Well, not it's not. That, well, maybe some of that, but it's the people pour cooking oil down the drain. Oh, oh that's what. Well, that I went a whole different. <laughs> I don't no. think anybody was like, no, oh, he means cooking oil. I didn't. That's what you did. You think cooking oil? Yeah, because I thought it was garbage disposal. Oh, people no, I thought about oh, that I substantial th- post Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. bathroom trip. I thought just yeah, that's what I thought you yeah, were talking yeah. about too. Like the plumbers are like, oh no. And they got to go over there. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, literally, was, I thought it was. I thought we we're gonna go, go into a bidet read. You know, <laughs> like plumbers, like they show up at your, uh, they show up at your house. They don't even talk to you. They just go to the bathroom. Yeah. And they Where's go, it at? <laughs> Where's it at? Well, I told you I had Thanksgiving at a buddy's house, and I I had left and went to a gas station. <laughs> I go, I'm not doing this. Yeah, just lit it. Yeah, up. I just gotta just gotta leave. And the next year, you didn't get invited home. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why That's they didn't want me to come home this year. Nobody wants me at their house for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, we always have to call the plumber after Aaron. Can you imagine having to call a plumber? Like they go, you think you're going to fix it? Not only can we not fix it, we have to call a, a, another guy to come in. Yeah, That's how much damage you did. Go, you think it had anything to do with that cooking oil that I yeah. put? They're like, absolutely not. Absolutely no. not. Did you pour it in the toilet? Yeah, I did it. Did you, do you even know what cooking oil is? I don't. I don't. But are you... Did someone I guess, do that? Is that just like the grease in a pot? I think so. Left over? Think uh, okay. So. Like bacon grease? I that stuff so. you're... Okay. All right. I would be willing to bet that it's not... These plumbers are not coming for the cooking goal. They're coming <laughs> for the other thing. And people just lie about the cooking goal. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think it gets stuck and they go, I don't know, just pour cooking goal down the toilet. <laughs> and then they get to tell the plumber, you're like, I, why'd you do that? You go, I don't know. My dad made me pour cereal down the toilet, so I just always do stuff down the toilet. <laughs> Uh, 50% of households serve red wine Thanksgiving dinner. Mm. Wow, that's a good percentage. We're a sweet tea family in the Bates yeah. household. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Diet Pepsi. I mean, yeah. just put we the, just put the jug right on the table. Yeah. yeah. Jug of sweet tea? Yeah. No, just any, any whatever plastic yeah. is on the table. Yeah. yeah. We do absinthe. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a liquor. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's a, a liqueur. <laughs> You'll appreciate this. During the 1993 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, Woody Woodpecker ripped a hole in his, the float, deflated, required him to have to be lowered to the ground. There's a Seinfeld. Seinfeld. That So that really happened? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. They did it the episode the next year, but it was based off of that. Yeah, that's funny. And so did he deflate? There's been a few like that. Barney got ripped in the abdomen. Yeah. <laughs> 
Did they say abdomen? That's what it said on this, due to strong winds. Why would they not just say, like, in his belly? Like, you know, because it's a, it's a you balloon. Gotta, you got to be medical it's about it. Yeah, it's like, a kid's balloon. It's a kid's balloon. Yeah. Like, just go, like, in Lacerations to yeah, yeah. pelvic yeah. tissue. Why do you even need a location? Just yeah. be like, hey, you yeah, got a hole in him. got a hole in him. And he ripped. <laughs> and his tum-tum. Did you ever do the thing in New York where you went to, would, the day before to go see them blow him up? No. I don't know. And I think I saw some. They of do that. it. They do it in the park. The, so like yeah. the night before, and they do the parade. Yeah, you can go and and see all yeah. the balloons blown up before. Yeah, and you can some be like real right diehards there. You're pretty deep in the parade. <laughs> yeah. Man. No, no, no. Well, we we went one time because I was trying to. My mom was in town, and so we're like, we're gonna do this thing, and then my, and then we got like we saw the line, and we're like, nah, let's just go eat yeah. chicken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah. You love seeing them inflated? I do. Would you like to see them deflated? <laughs> Where you can't tell what they are? The cat in the hat struck a lamppost on 72nd Street, crumpled to the ground. The Pink Panther had to be stabbed by police in order to be stabilized. I mean, these are... It sounds like a bloodbath. like bath. crimes. Like, it sounds... Like, these, like they, they came alive, and they're going, oh, no. <laughs> they finally had to lower the size of... Restrict the size of these floats. They were getting too big, so they were causing problems. <laughs> I just think they should have the parade in like the in the middle of nowhere, and that way, like you can you could go like real country with the balloons. I'll go big with it. Yeah, that's what I'm they, that, that that would be interesting to uh, to have, have a like, parade with nobody there. Like you go to where? Year. Like uh, I mean, you go to Oklahoma. Oh, like go to Oklahoma. Flat. Like big, go somewhere. Big field. Big field. Go flat. Have it go down the road and just be super flat and be like, you can make them as big as you want to make them. Yeah. That's yeah. a good idea. That and then, idea. And then to deflate them, you get like a like a pumpkin cannon, like a yeah. big pumpkin thing, and then the, the pumpkins yeah. take them. You can get real country real fast. Yeah. Put jelly inside of it. That's what I'm telling you. And or everybody jam. licks and jam. Jam and preserves. Some have jelly, some have jam, some have preserves, and everybody licks the street. I'm <laughs> telling you. We're on to something. We're, you got yeah. every, they're laughing. We're on to something. We're, yeah, we're going to have to iron out I, the details. Yeah, I was with you to that last part, but <laughs> I think it... The people that go to something like that, I think they would. Yeah. You well, know? last year we showed a picture. Last year, the Macy's Thanksgiving to Parade, no one was allowed because of COVID, but Ronald McDonald still wore a face shield. Remember this? Yes, I do. He and Grimace yeah. were in the back of the car. Well, we talked about it because Grimace had, it looked like Grimace was trying to get it. Yeah. Well, Grimace is already wearing a mask, though. Yeah. One of them had a cone on, I think. No, Grimace had a cone, and then, but it was upside down. Right. So, it looked like one of those dog cones, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh no, Ronald. Ronald, 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 Ronald had it, but yeah. it, like it was like perfect, like where you're like, I've never seen this. Well, before. he coughs yeah. in you. I yeah. did not know that Ronald McDonald could get more terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> but there it is. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that looks that. I mean, that looks like the guy that competes with Jason. Yeah. Do you know what Grimace is? No. Oh, did we he's talk a, about all this? A teardrop. What is he? Oh, hold on. It came not out. A teardrop. It came out recently. Oh, he's a the purple people eater. Yeah. Uh, He's a taste bud. Oh. Oh. And the guy who said it was named Brian Bates. Really? He was the McDonald's <laughs> manager of the year. So Did you find this out from Google on Alerts? On my daily Google Alerts, <laughs> let's see what I did today. Yeah. Is this. And then people started sending it to me. You're just mad because he's done more with your name than you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> a little Jerry Seinfeld. A little Jerry. <laughs> uh, pardoning of the turkey, Harry Truman was credited with it because he received the first turkey but he didn't know what it was for, so he had had it for dinner. <laughs> like, <laughs> the National Turkey Federation sent him a turkey, but he had it for dinner, yeah. so he did not pardon it. John F. Kennedy was the first one to let it turkey go. Uh, George H.W. Bush was the first one who actually made it a national tradition to pardoning of the turkey. That's funny that Truman <laughs> just ate it. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool, man. And then just... <laughs> Uh, the Lions were the first team to do, play on Thanksgiving, 1934. Wow. Wow. Haven't won since. Yeah. <laughs> the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was on the radio for years before it was on TV. Think about that. Yeah. Just being like, oh, who do we got next? I guess you could be like, who do we got next? And you're excited. Who do we got? <laughs> Did he say it? Then, yeah. All right. Who do we Mickey got Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and then you really show the footage of it. It's just a guy in an empty room, <laughs> and there's no <laughs> Macy's Day Parade. Up next... Star Wars. <laughs> All of them are there, and they're bigger than the buildings. And no, everybody's at home like, wow. 
making it up. He's just making it up. He's in a room. He goes, these <laughs> dumb people. Well, that's why you have the commentators. That's why they're there. Those wow. the when you see on TV the people that you've never seen before in show business ever mm-hmm. and they're the Isn't parade it like experts. someone famous though it's always like Jesse Palmer or somebody like yeah. that yeah but it's right? also One today's of those show guys. cast but yeah. a lot of times they're but that's what they're there for is because like it's because of the radio tradition because like that's why that whole because like it's I think that you have to have someone talking. Or otherwise, we're grown people watching balloons with <laughs> silence. I mean, you that don't is. need somebody. To, I mean, you don't need somebody to tell you what. I know, but you need. Is. But you need just the pure awkwardness mm-hmm. of just if there was nobody yeah. talking. No, I think you could do it. I think you could absolutely. Yeah. What, little you? things across the screen. How many times do you watch television with just with things going across the bottom of the screen? Never. I mean, and somebody's always talking. Yeah, someone's for always talking. everything though. You think need about someone to like. It's it's the they, puppy bowl has announcers. Yeah, too. you're 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 not like listening to them, but they're 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 talking. Otherwise, it's going to be. It gets real weird, dude. If I walked in someone's home and they were watching the Macy Day's Parade alone in silence, I would leave. I'd be like, well, we're doing this somewhere else. I'm going to tell you something. I like it with no count. I like, and I'd wait in the driveway as everybody pulled up. i go, do not go with this. You don't want to see what I saw. And he's like, is everybody dead in there? You go, worse. Worse. He's watching the Macy Day's Parade alone, no volume. <laughs> Just by just and, he, uh, and I said not why? even eating anything. Not even eating. Anything. I said why, and he goes because I know what they are. I don't need them to tell me. And I go, you know how crazy that is coming out of your mouth. So you'd like to watch football without announcers? I do. I because you, you can do it on ESPN. And you watch like a different. If you watch like the Spider Cam only, mm-hmm. that they don't they don't have the broadcast mm-hmm. voices in it. So you just watch the game. Because like I can't say I, I can't say how much like additionally angry I get when I hear a broadcaster say something or like they say so many dumb things. Yeah, and I'm not. Like, they, I get they, that, or they, or they try to like I, I spin you for, at all. I get it, but it's just part of. You it. can't. It's yeah. You can't. You just listen to your team's thing, then. Like the the the. Well, they do that now. The rate the, you yeah. can listen to the rate the home broadcast. Yeah. But I mean, I'm talking just like just inside. Just just you just hear what's going on on the field. It's actually way more peaceful. <laughs> you don't have anybody yelling at you the whole time. Like you is, can hear. So the, is that why it's pretty tough to find? <laughs> I mean, it's the, so good of a they thing. Just, they just—it's only when the, they have the spider cams. Yeah, because they don't have that many. Because no one wants to. It's you. <laughs> you like I'm silence. The, they're I'm waiting the for you to stop watching so they can stop it all together. Listen, guys, you know like, <laughs> we still got one guy. You guys are not going to ruin my inner peace. Okay, yeah. I'm telling you, peace. That's such a funny word. <laughs> it's so much more peaceful. And this is how her her violent corru- game. corrupted all my friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you me wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, Psychology Today said 60% of Americans would rather do anything other than think about what they're grateful for on Thanksgiving. People don't like to do it. Anything. How do you even know that? (laughs) Who's, like, that's what I mean. Like, who were these polls, dude? (laughs) How how would you ask that question? (laughs) How would you, you know, it's not like, do you like turkey or ham? Mm -hmm. That's like, all right, I could see how you get that. What's the question? Three in five respondents reported preferring to do something other than think about what they're grateful for during Thanksgiving. They'd rather watch football, read a book, or play with a pet. The way that's even, <laughs> the way that that's even phrased, I guarantee you, it's phrased like, "What do you want to do all day? Do you want to sit in a room alone and be and just thankful, or you want to watch a football game?" And you're like, "I'd rather watch a football game." And it's not being like, "I'm not Check. sitting at all thankful." It's like you know. Does anybody want to sit in a room for yeah. four hours and just be like, let me go through mm-hmm. what I'm thinking? No. The, you're, the way that's afraid. That's, They're not mutually exclusive either. You can do yeah. all of those things <laughs> in like five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Is it, were you glad there's a football game on? You go, thank goodness there was a football game on. And you go, okay. Well, Jessica can do both because the game's silent. He can think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So maybe it does need this. Well, also, I think it's the thing. It's like, where, where were you interviewing people? Because like a lot of times you like like where were you? Oh, we were interviewing people that were coming out of. A I think hot they topic. go to. I think they ask their neighbors. That's what I honestly. I, I believe these people that do these polls. Felix. They go. Yeah. They go. Uh, they go knock on. A, they're in New York. They knock on four doors and they go. That's good. That's all of America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it's like. Uh, and then they just go and go. Everybody's doing it this other way. You ask someone. Does every country have Thanksgiving? A lot of countries have it, not for the American reasons, yeah. but Canada has Thanksgiving. Theirs is like the second Monday in October. Mm-hmm. Uh, ours is always the fourth Thursday in November. Yeah. Uh, I remember when that happened. We were on tour with Graham, 
And Graham's like, I'm Canadian. And then some woman goes, Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And he goes, Because it was Canadian you. Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 Most people booed. Yeah. The one woman <laughs> did yell. I'm glad somebody said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of countries do have Thanksgiving for their own reasons yeah. to be thankful for. Yeah. Right. But we have the best one. Yeah. We have the best one. All right. <laughs> We're thankful for it. We're, We're thankful. thankful for We're it. thankful for everybody listening to this podcast. Because, I mean, it's, you know. Your first to Thanksgiving as a married man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm going to be in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> I'm at the Columbus Funny, Funny Bone. Bone up there. Yeah. But I'm up there. I got family up there. So oh, okay. I thought you were just promoting your dates instead of <laughs> talking about Are you doing a show on Thanksgiving? Not on Thanksgiving, but that weekend. You know, one of the best nights for comedy, it was always the day before Thanksgiving. No, Wednesday? I'm on, mm-hmm. I'm on a show on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah, yeah. On Thanksgiving? No, the, the day, day before. Because everybody's like gets there and they're like, let's go out. And because you're gonna be home all day tomorrow, and so that would always be a big day. It's the drunkest night in the country. Yeah, that Wednesday night. Yeah, before Thanksgiving. Ooh. Where's your seatbelt? Uh, <laughs> just you know, don't get out and drive. Don't be dumb. All right, everybody. Again, we love you. Thank you uh, for everything. And uh, yeah, we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>